Okay, so uh, the smoke trails of this ejection capsule are kind of fading into the distance now, uh, Rulin, as you kind of watch it go. Um, so yeah, you guys are left in this castle courtyard um, amidst the kind of ruins of the, uh, the automatons that you defeated last session. Um, Obviously now the the crossbow batteries on the walls are, are silent. You feel like you've bought the uh, um, the lacelle, the respite it needed. Um, and casting your eyes out to sea, you can you can kind of observe the captain has managed to uh, limp the ship uh, into shore. Although it looks like he's he's managed to run her aground on some. Uh, uh, either coral or a reef of some sorts, just uh, a little way off the shore. But uh, she seems quite wedged quite tight. Doesn't look like she's sinking. Well, we've still got the launch here on the beach as well, haven't we? Yes, yeah, the launch you guys arrived in is still down on the beach. Okay. Well. I mean, We could head back to head back across to see how how they're getting on if they need anything. I mean, we've got plenty of supplies lying around here, so if there's anything the ship needs to fix itself up, we could probably uh, bring it over. Plus, it looks like there's there's a lot of food supplies and things like that as well, wasn't there? Yeah, there are quite a few crates containing, you know, um, miscellaneous food stocks. Yeah, because if the the cell is going to be stranded there for a couple of days, they might want you could bring some food and stuff over to help them out. Yeah, good plan. And they can watch this. Uh, well, the uh, floor right that we took out of the chest as well. Imagine it's all in my bag of holding. So we can head back over, have a chat with the captain, see if he needs anything. If then if it turns out that the cell's gonna be stranded there for a few days, we could always uh head over land. Maybe. Ferry them back with the launch and then we could always go down to the bastion of Nerna. Well Yeah. It's a bit of a trek on foot, but yeah, we could do it. What would what would you estimate that that would be on foot? Um, depends. Uh, it's not a particularly habited island, this, so the uh, lack of paths would definitely slow you down. Um, you're probably looking at about four or five days on foot. Well, at least we can head over to the little cell, see what they, see what it's looking like, and how long it might take to fix it up. Get it seaworthy again. All right, roll me a perception. Toric, roll perception. Those are some bad words right there. So, Toric's just rolled a nat <laughs> one, and Toric has a minus three modifier to perception, so <laughs> I'm guessing someone in the party's dying? <laughs> um, yeah, you, uh, you. You, failed, you failed to notice uh, what's going on. You kind of put aside the banging of metal you hear and the kind of prizing noise of somebody wrenching something over. Um, first, you're aware that something's wrong is when you hear, Hey, fellas, look at this! Uh, and as you turn around, you see the ball has been tinkering around in one of the downed automatons, and you see in his hand he has what appears to be a uh, um, you know, magical crystal. Uh, clearly the thing that was powering it, only it seems that he's just wrenched it out of its protective casing. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Those are the last words any of you hear before your ears start ringing. Um, as the shockwave settles, uh, and a, you know, kind of the dust starts to settle, uh, you look around, still kind of half shell-shocked by 
the colossal explosion that's just happened in this courtyard. And you see a smoking set of boots and not much else where the ghoul once stood. Huh. A damn fool. Mm, that was a bad time to be very unobservant. It's, it's really weird that he, he gave me that gold purse uh, before we came up here. <laughs> <laughs> what well, well, great what? timing! <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were going to have it anyway. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> he wasn't here. In well, fact, um... you distinctly notice uh, what appears to be a trickle of melted gold coins just ebbing away into the cobblestone. <laughs> Completely useless and unsalvageable. <laughs> Maybe he kept some money in his boots. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that was... Uh... I mean, maybe it was for the best. He was a man out of his time. Like, you know, it would have been hard for him to adjust back to society, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, now he'll oh, well. get used to adjusting to the air currents. Well. At least yes. he should be able to find people he knows now. Maybe. <clears throat> anyway. Yes, moving swiftly on. I don't feel too remorseful about that one, if I'm honest. Mm. Okay. At this point, the party is just so used to death, it doesn't even slow them down. Let's, uh, let's load up some of these crates. Get some food and things, and any medical supplies, maybe, that are around. Might be some injured guys still on board the ship. I'm really sorry, I'm going to have to keep muting myself for some of The heartbroken sobs are uh, getting louder and louder. <laughs> oh, jeez. Every... Oh, okay. It's probably best we don't get any comments <laughs> yeah, for that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping it wasn't true love because I've just ripped him away heartlessly. <laughs> um... So, yeah, the crates, um, there's quite a few of them lying around. So you guys uh, spend a few minutes kind of prying the lids off uh, a few of them. I mean, you've got a bit of a choice selection of uh, non-perishable foods and a few medical supplies. Nothing uh, that's going to make a doctor particularly uh, well-stocked, but enough for, you know, kind of basic wounds treatment and... Uh, yeah, it's kind of stabilization, bandages, the sort like that. Um, obviously, the launch itself uh, is of limited capacity, especially if you're all trying to pile into it. So you'll have to uh, kind of pick and choose the, uh, the most important aspects to uh, take with you. But of course, you know, it's... Uh, Obviously possible to ferry multiple trips across, if that's what you choose to do. We're going to have to, like, leave a chicken, a fox, and some uh, <laughs> some grain by any chance. I got it. Um, Went right in my head, that one. Yeah. What, Japanese uh, logic problem, whatever. <laughs> anyway. Um, I recommend medicine first. Yeah. Head back over and see what else they might need. Maybe we can strip some, some of these cranes down for the lumber and whatever. Whatever they might need to fix it up. We don't know if we need lumber just yet. Lumber's heavy. Well, that's what I mean. So we'll just take some medical supplies over for now, see what they need, and come back if necessary. Right, right. Okay, let's load it up and take off then. Okay, so... Uh, what the list days? Uh, they're still up on the walls. They're quite large. You definitely wouldn't get one of those in the... Uh, oh, yeah. in I did say, if we're going to leave them behind, we best... Uh, Cut the strings on them so that so Herbert doesn't get himself into any more trouble. Hmm. 
might be funnier to remove a key bit of machinery that's a bitch to manufacture. Because, you know, if you cut the ropes, that only slows them down so much, right? Well, you're the one who would know what the key bit of machinery is. So. Cool, I'll sabotage this. You, you guys bag up that shit. Okay. Okay, so Torek, you uh, make your way up to the battlements and uh, approach the first um, blister roll of investigation. That will be a 18. So the blister itself is reasonably old fashioned, um, looks to be quite well used, quite possibly uh, was already here. Uh, you can see, however, several fairly unorthodox aftermarket uh, modifications have been done to this thing. Um, most notably is a little black box um, uh, on the side of this thing with what appears to be a crystalline scope of sorts. You look through it and it magnifies a distance uh, uh, kind of off into the um, kind of where the blister's pointed. You can see a few uh, um, kind of black lines crossing over. You also see what appears to be a little stick coming out of this black box. It appears that this uh, stick is a control of source as you are able to wiggle it. Oh my, I'm taking this. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna see if I can just like I don't want to risk damaging the actual thing, so I'm tempted just to like saw pieces of wood <laughs> on each side of where it's attached. Because <laughs> I, I I did just recently break a very uh, important um, magical con. You ah fuck it, I'll just try and get it off. Uh, or okay. I think, uh, wise enough to uh, try it any other way. Sure, so um, roll me a slight hand. Oh, I'm going to use a genius on that one. So that'll oh. be 8 plus uh, 4, 12. Okay, so you um, kind of start to uh, kind of dismantle the casing of this, uh, kind of unscrewing it in, in areas. Um, and as you take it apart, you can see that some of this uh, mechanism seems to be um, kind of leading back towards the main uh, kind of arrow rut, if you will, the bit where the bolt sits before it's fired. Um, it seems that whatever this mechanism does, it uh, also interacts with the bolt itself. Although, uh, on first glance, this is uh, unclear exactly how or uh, to what effect. But uh, you're able to get the actual mechanism off after um, kind of careful study. You realise that since this was added to the thing in the first place, it was lightly bolted on. Um, and now the case is removed, you've uh, been proved correct, so it's actually quite easy to uh, unbolt the thing. Excellent. Um, the scope as well, uh, contained in a brass tube, comes apart quite easily. Mm. Um, so yeah, you stash that away. I like to imagine, like, for the aspect of the extra five points of genius in there is just Torek remembering that righty tighty, lefty loosey. So he's like, oh, yes, don't do it that way. That would just crush the thing. <laughs> it's like unbolting it rather than just crushing it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you're, uh, you're careful enough that you don't uh, cause any damage to any of the delicate components or crystal lenses. Awesome. I'll I'll add that to my inventory then, and uh, probably pass over to someone else. Okay, so uh, Braxton and Rulin, you've kind of had a look through these crates and have found what you would estimate to be the uh, kind of most important medical equipment um, for a ship that possibly has injuries, um, and you. Make sure these are all kind of nicely snugly packed into a singular crate. Um, and between the two, you manage to get that lugged back onto the uh, onto the launch. So uh, with that pressed into the bow, you could all just about fit on. Torek's going to have to be on someone's lap, but uh, you would just about have enough room. Are we drawing straws for who gets Torek? Thank <laughs> you. 
I'd say let the gnome choose. <laughs> I'm sorry, Abato, I wasn't listening. Throw it here on someone's knee. Whose knee would you like to sit on? Don't oh. make it weird. Um... Torek's gonna uh Torek's gonna roll a D4. <laughs> uh, oh, Rex yep. <laughs> Mind if I sit on your lap? Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Just um no mixing any dangerous chemicals while we're traveling on the the, the small boat current, yeah. Um, well, I don't think it's a very good idea, because, you know, if there's a bump in the road and I shoot acid everywhere, it's not only my face that's at risk, as per usual, it's also someone else's uh, unmentionables. Yeah. Okay. Right, so you uh, can't help but feel relieved that you're wearing fairly thick armour. I get the impression he's got a rather uh, pointy bum that I wouldn't want <laughs> jabbing into my thighs. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, right, yeah, we'll set off back for the cell now. <laughs> okay, so uh, obviously now with Torek on his lap, Braxton can't row. Um, it would uh, obviously get in the way. Um, so the rest of you can kind of take up yours. Havel, you grab one room, you grab the other. And uh, push off from the uh, the swell of the beach and make your way over towards the Lasalle. Um, so it's not easy going. The sea is uh, picked up a little bit. Um, the wind is kind of whipping up the uh, wave crests into uh, quite violent white uh, horses. Um, spray kind of, you know whips against your faces, but it's uh, not a particularly long row. So after a um, kind of short hop, about uh, just under 10 minutes, uh, you guys are able to come alongside the LaSalle. And now that you're up close, you can see that she has indeed beached herself on uh, what appears to be a uh, kind of low um, kind of rock bank almost. Uh, looking at it, you can see that the you know, tips of these rocks are mostly submerged. It would have been very difficult to have seen these. You, uh, you imagine the captain probably didn't put it here on purpose. But uh, okay. as you do come alongside, um, you can kind of tell immediately that there's a lot going on on board. Um, the commotion of people running about all over the place, kind of raised voices. Um, make themselves apparently obvious, but your approach has been noticed, and as you pull up, a cargo net comes down over the side, um, which you're able to grab onto and secure the tug. The uh, climber poses no challenge. So, uh, as you pull yourself aboard, um, you can see that the captain is uh, kind of up on the poop deck with the, uh, the first mate. They're clearly having quite a heated discussion about something. Um, a couple of the sailors stopped to give you a hand with the, the crate getting out over the side. But um, they don't really stay long. They've clearly got uh, stuff to do. You can see that the pump is just being constantly manned for uh, sailors are kind of already red in the face, sweating buckets, but just keeping that uh, arm just going up and down, up and down. Well... What's the uh, what's the skinny captain? He uh, looks up, kind of noticing you for the first time. Oh, you're back. Well, that was faster than I thought, but uh, I'm afraid it's not looking good. We've uh, well, we've got more holes in this uh, this vessel than we should. That's for sure. Uh, it's looking like the rocks might actually. Ironically, be our saviour here. We're lodged quite firmly and uh, won't be at risk again until the tide comes back. But uh, we're taking on water still. She'll uh, not be in sailing shape for quite some time, if ever, actually. The uh, 
The damage is more than our ship's carpenter can do much about here. He um, God looks quite, you know, obviously quite disheartened by this. Um, as you look around, you can kind of understand why the mast is, uh, well, the mast, after taking that ballista bolt uh, in the first contact, finally gave way, it seems, when the uh, kind of a shock of running around uh, went up it. A long old fracture has appeared, and you can see the top half is kind of dangling by some ropes and sail. It's uh, clearly in no fit states to uh, be used anytime soon, that's for sure. Well, I'm afraid, my friends, that uh, it's not looking like I'm going to be able to take you back to, uh, to Scarpland anytime soon. Right. Is there anything that we can do to help you fix this, or is it beyond any help? There's quite a lot of supplies still left over at the uh, the ruins. He, um... Kind of says, it might be best if I show you what we're dealing with here. Please, follow me. Mind your step, though, it's uh, slippery down there. Um, so he makes his way down into the bilge, um, and you guys can see that the um, the damage here is extensive and easily apparent. The uh, kind of forward and starboard side of the uh, of the vessel's hull has just scraped across these rocks, and uh, well, to be honest, there's more missing than there's still left. But uh, because it's on these rocks, it's in no danger of slipping loose and sinking. Um, but should she come loose, you're probably looking at about a a hole that's easily about five foot wide and uh, a couple of feet tall. Um, and that's just the main one, there are a series of other um, kind of smaller breaches across the hole. Um, at this point, the water in the bilge is up to your waist, but uh, seeing as the, the ship's propped up, it doesn't seem to be getting any higher. I see. My, uh, my main problem is we, well, you know, I mean, the chippy has a few bits and pieces, but to uh, to patch a hole that size is going to require a considerable amount of uh, of good lumber. Oh, and so uh, we turn just... and give Torek a side eye. I... Not to mention, we'd need the mast as well. That's uh... well, it's all right having a a hull, but with nothing to sail her with, it's. Uh... Almost as good as having to row there yourself. Well, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it would take us a lot of time to fix this. And, as I said, we, we lack the materials as presents. Uh, my first mate and I, we were just discussing a, uh, a course of action. It seems, judging from our charts, there's a village a couple of days from here. We were thinking that it might be best to uh, potentially investigate whether we could chart a passage back from there. Might be time to abandon the old girl. Uh, which village would that be? So um, he takes you to a small um, kind of chart table and points out to one just uh, kind of on the coast about halfway between you and Lanfon. It's, uh, it's this one over here. It goes by the name of Porf Call. It's uh, not a very big place, but uh, it might offer a shelter. Well, there are plenty of supplies still over by the old fort there, but honestly, I wouldn't recommend going inside the keep at all. There's, uh, well, some rather dangerous uh, materials in there. I mean, well, the supplies would possibly just... set up uh, a small camp there, maybe. The supplies could come in handy, and I'm uh, not entirely sure it would be safe for us to uh, remain here overnight. If the tide comes back and we uh, come loose, we uh, we could be in trouble. Okay, I will get a shore party assembled and we'll see what uh, 
if anything can be used. Uh, as for yourselves, well, I'm uh, obviously aware that this isn't where you want it to be, and I apologise, but uh, I'm afraid at this point I need to think about the safety of my crew. I uh, have a duty to them, you see. Well, of course, we uh, understand. To be honest, it's not the worst thing ever. We uh, do have some business over to the east with the bastion of Nerna that we can attend to. It's a few days travel, but we're not crossing back over to the mainland anytime soon, I suppose. No, possibly not. They may well, have a vessel for us to travel back from there, possibly. Perhaps. Well, either way, we will uh, put your short together and come and see what, uh, what's to be had in this keep. Well, as I said, stay out of the keep. It's uh, not the safest. So the, uh, the captain and the first mate um, kind of get together a, a small party and uh, retrieve another launch from the, uh, the starboard side of the vessel. Um, so they, uh, they start off towards the uh, shore again. Um, are you guys wanting to do anything on the ship? Do you want to head back with them? <coughs> Probably just yeah. collect anything we've left and head back with them. Yeah, no point rowing separately if they're going that way. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you guys... Um, now with the uh, cargo unloaded, they're able to all comfortably fit in the uh, in the launch. So you follow the, um, the captain's little vessel, um, and again about ten minutes later, put to shore. Um, and as you guys walk up towards the, uh, the castle, um, obviously now you're not under fire. You're able to negotiate the uh, the actual gatehouse. The um, the sailors and the first mate kind of get to having a look through the uh, uh, the crates. Now that you've opened them, they're able to kind of quickly assess um, you know, what, uh, what the inventory is. And they seem pretty delighted by the fact there's a lot of hard liquor here. <laughs> um, but you notice the captain is uh, more interested in the, in the crane. And he's uh, kind of looking up at it with a kind of quite a pensive expression on his face. Yes, that might work. Um, that'd be 20 feet. Is he thinking of master replacing months, I'm guessing? He uh, kind of nods as you voice your thoughts, Tarek. Yes, well, it's clearly a, uh, a bit of timber accustomed to dealing with high loads. It would be uh, probably just what we're after. Looks like it's uh, aged and seasoned pretty well, too, from what I can tell. Mm. The um, captain then goes up onto the battlements to inspect it further, and uh, before too long, he calls down to the XO and a few of the sailors who uh, come up and kind of give him a hand, starting to, uh, to dismantle this crane. Um, They don't really do a great job of it, and uh, you kind of watch as this uh, crane uh, jolts a little bit, and then the uh, the beam, uh, almost uh, in slow motion, still attached by ropes, kind of just falls into the courtyard. Um, as the tip kind of hits the stone, the, uh, the first mate cuts one of the rope, and then the rest of it follows down. Um, kind of a loud bud, this thing bounces up a little bit, but uh, doesn't seem to be damaged from its fall. Um, yeah, looking at it, you can see this would be a very suitable replacement for mass. It's big, it's uh, clearly quite sturdy. Um, the ship has a carpenter and it wouldn't take him all too much to uh, you know, fit the uh, correct rigging to it if it were installed. Well, this is a uh, quite a fortuitous event. It seems that uh, 
but this will be ideal. I'll uh, I'll have my men take it back to uh, to the cell and get to work on on fixing that. I must say that makes it uh, well, it makes our position a lot more tenable, definitely. Uh, if we can just find some suitable timber planks, we can probably uh, patch the worst of the damage. But uh, I doubt we'll find that here. I mean, these crates uh, are not really suitable wood. He uh, kind of taps on a few of them. A bit too thin and flimsy for uh, the hull of a vessel. Hmm. Tell you what, I'm willing to fully reimburse you your uh, cost of transport if you were to uh, go and acquire some suitable timber for us. I could do that. Um, the, uh, what was it called? Kevville? Pop call. Pop call. That's miles off. Um, they, I suppose, they may have uh, some timber available of some sort. We could head down, speak to them about sending it up this way. Yeah. That sounds good. We should uh, probably have a mast up and secured by that point. Tell you what, I'll uh, start the... Uh, Start the crew off on repairs. I'll need to drop anchor to make sure we don't come loose from rocks in the meantime. But, uh, yes, if you could get us some, and this is important, it needs to be aged timber. We can't have any, any green woods. It'll, uh, it'll not do. Uh, okay, certainly. We'll, uh, we'll speak to them, see what they have available. Perfect. Well, I uh, wish you safe travels and uh, go with haste, my friends. We'll be back as soon as we can. Are we heading out like right right now? What do you think? I'm just really? thinking it might be nice to have a bit of a rest. We've been running around for a while now. A rest would be fantastic. Yeah. Not running much comfort, but yeah, rest. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Now All we're right. out in the wilderness, so it's one night is a short rest now, isn't it? Uh, well, because you're in a keep, I would say that you're going to have sufficient shelter here to uh, have, you know, a uh, Good night's sleep. Protected by quite thick stone walls. So uh, a long rest would definitely be possible. Okay. That depends how quickly you guys want to head out. A long rest, I think, would be a very good idea. I think it would do us all good. Um, yep, yeah, I think that's a fair point. They're not going to make that much progress with that mast in the space of us, you know, having a rest. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, they're not going anywhere. That's true. Yeah. Rest up here and head out. First light. I'm going to have a look at my spells and do some management. Okay, so uh, as the evening draws in and uh, the sailors are you know, clearly not essential personnel are shipped off the, uh, the LaSalle. Um, you guys pitch camp um, in a courtyard, find yourselves a, a nice bit of cover and get a campfire going. Um, it doesn't take long for the sailors to uh, start tapping the, uh, the bottles of spirits lying around. Um, and before long, you just hear the... Uh, um, you know, the sound of revelry and these sailors telling, again, quite exaggerated stories from uh, the attack. How uh, one guy claims to have uh, 
manage to save the ship almost single-handedly by uh, mm. kind of blowing away a bolt as it came in, uh, using nothing but his lungs. Um, all his comrades quickly call him out on that, but you know the, the boasting and the, the storytelling uh, goes on for a bit. Um, after a while, though, a, uh, a glass is raised and a toast is said for their uh, their fallen comrades who uh, who didn't make it. Um, none of them saw him die, but they they're assured that uh, he went out fighting. Good old legless Larry. <laughs> oh. oh no, that was my fault. <laughs> Uh, in fact, let's roll it. But fuck, did you say a little gnome? One of the sailors it... heard Sorek's exclamation. I tried to save him. I tried my best and I couldn't. <laughs> I should have paid more attention in medical school and not run off to become an archaeologist. It just that means that he was right. Your friend was severely injured by a ballista bolt, and unfortunately, my little friend here was uh, unable to save him. His uh, his injuries were too great. Partial surgeon training, and he was beyond Torek's help. He uh, takes it pretty hard. He, you know, but uh, your friend was was quite severely injured. It was. Uh, yeah. Uh, roll me a deception, but do with advantage because <laughs> Torek's putting on quite a performance. Because <laughs> <laughs> I said daddy. Uh, that's a 19. The, um, the sailors, is obviously quite inebriated at this point, listen to your uh, retelling. Um, and after a while, they can kind of, you know, start nodding. Well, at least you tried. Poor Larry. Well, that was actually his Larry. Name. <laughs> it's Carmen! <laughs> Legless Larry. Well, uh, he passes over a bottle of uh, strong spell- uh, smelling rum to you, uh, Rulant. To Larry! To Larry. Well, uh, take a swig. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> You take a uh, take a good strong swig and immediately wonder whether um, Horik Senior had bought this for drinking or for lubrication purposes because you know, <laughs> this was clearly not meant to be consumed by a, a humanoid. Um, burns your throat on the way down, but uh, it seems that any any misunderstanding with the sailors has been uh, has been cleared up, um, and they come and invite you to play a, a few. Hands of cards. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll do that. All right, so uh, as Rulin kind of gets uh, kind of corralled into playing cards with the uh, the sailors, the rest of you are left to uh, kind of find yourselves a nice uh, nice patch of uh, of courtyards to settle down for the night. So uh, everybody, take a long rest. Oh, baby. Hey, Crispy, how do you feel about unearthed arcana spells? Because one has just shown up in my known spells. Um, yeah, I'm usually okay with them. Um, that's not too bad an issue for me. Which one are you thinking? It's called Flame Stride. And, um, yeah. It's, it, it's particularly cool because, uh, it's uh, one of those things that uh, it's quite easy to imagine how Torek would cast it. Right. Yeah, well, I don't mind an after the cleaner stuff. Um, Brilliant. Might crack it out later in the sesh, then. I can't wait to reread these notes from, uh, like, in a year's time, when I, re- when I read it, and it says, Rulon gets drunk and plays cards with the sailors, in brackets, to legless Larry. <laughs> Like, when I read that in two years' time, I'm going to be like, what the fuck was that about? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's probably one of those things where uh, as soon as you read it, it'll all come flooding back. 
Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Torek the surgeon. <laughs> Back in the days before he turned evil. <laughs> this is one of the first steps toward his turn to the path of evil. To As, from, from an outside perspective, I'm sure, like, at least a few, you're fairly far down that path. Everything's relative, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Um, Torek, could you uh, finish this tattoo as well? Because <laughs> you only got about halfway through it <laughs> before we start getting fired at by Ballista. Oh, huh. oh yeah, yeah. Uh, what was I drawing again? Like some kind of like wolf or? Um, I hope not. Let me take a look at my notes. Oh, 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 I was well off. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, Tarek, you uh, you're able to put the finishing touches on uh, Roland's tattoo. Yay! Now I can actually equip it. Epic. That is a really cool tattoo. I hope it gives you a bit more flexibility in your play. So I've attuned to that now as well. Mm -hmm. So I've got two attuned items. Braces on my tattoo. So where exactly are we heading right now? There's a small village um, along the coast that the captain uh, has pointed out on the charts. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, equipping spells and thinking, like, what what would be useful and why, you know? Okay, so, um, yeah, you get, you get some sleep and the night passes. Um, you kind of hear the wind howling over the top of the walls, but you're sheltered um, down at their feet, so uh, everybody gets a full eight hours. Um, obviously really you only need four, but um, yeah, your sleep is undisturbed and uneventful. So uh, in the morning, the uh, sun starts to creep over the horizon. Um, the sailors are already kind of up quite early, um, getting to work, hauling some of the supplies down to the beach. Uh, it seems that they're clearly well adapted to the uh, the effects of strong liquor. Uh, Rulin, on the other hand, roll me a constitution saving throw. Oh. I, do, I am immune to poison, if that means anything. <laughs> yeah, I wonder where um, all the paint thinner went. <laughs> <sighs> For fuck's sake. Come oh. on. Roland, you may be immune to poison, but uh, this headache is uh, kind of saying otherwise. <laughs> the liquor uh, clearly wasn't really meant for the, uh, the elven palate. So, uh, a little fresh this morning. Um, the rest of your party kind of get up and go about their business. Torix, uh Brewing of potions and calls of Zafari are particularly grating this morning. <laughs> um, but you're confident a little bit of fresh air will probably do you some good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see that the um, LaSalle has managed to uh, keep her position overnight as the tides have come and gone. Um, Perhaps it's clearly used the anchors to good effect. Um, what's more, you can see that uh, the um, kind of replacement mast is uh, kind of already been raised into place and uh, work is ongoing around it. Um, but truth to his words, it seems like the captain's uh, carpenter has been able to make good use of it. Well, yeah, time to hit the road then if nobody's got uh, anything particularly pressing they want to do. Um, I did just have one question <coughs> for the captain. Okay, so, yeah. So, 
at the end of our encounter in the bastion um there was an escapee he went by air by some sort of ejection sort of mechanism did you happen to see anything in the sky and what sort of bearing he was going at yes we uh we did see something we weren't sure what it was but uh as far as we could tell it uh you know went off in land somewhere couldn't uh couldn't really say to be honest we had uh quite pressing issues to deal with of our own but uh we did notice it and thought it was quite hard what was that by the way um well, it was part of one of these um, mechanical suits they have down here. Um, I don't know too much detail about all of this technical stuff myself. Um, perhaps Torek would explain it to you one day. <laughs> I see. Well, either way, I'm afraid I uh, I don't have a, an exact location. All I know is that it's... Uh, came down further inland from where we were, well, where we were stranded. Yes, thank, thank you. It's not, not a problem. I just thought, in case you happen to see. So that's to the east then, just to clarify. Yeah, to the east somewhere. Hmm. A rough kind of direction. Maybe a bit if we've got time. Thank you, Captain. That is all. That was such like, uh, you know, in video games where you click the goodbye button <laughs> on the social interaction. <laughs> and then I actually accidentally speak to the Captain again and just go, thank you, Captain. That is all. <laughs> Hello, Brex. No, 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 no. You Hello. click on him again, you don't do the whole thing. So, uh, <laughs> where we were study was uh, looking further inland. <laughs> Do you have any news of what's going on in the world, Captain? <laughs> yeah. Rumours. <laughs> Sorry, this quest is uh, DLC. Please purchase uh, Season Pass. Oh, Which no. PayPal, Crispy? <laughs> <laughs> this is Crispy's way of saying he wants to get paid for this shit. <laughs> Give me some digital snacks, yeah. yeah. <laughs> NFT pizza or something, I don't know. Some computer chips. Hey. That's a robot's favorite meal. Um, yeah, all right, let's head off uh, down the coast then. If no one else needs to do anything. Not ready to go. Okay, so um, the castle... Uh, now that the, uh, the crates are being shipped out, um, you're quite happy to leave the sailors to it. They're clearly not uh, be under too much uh, rush at the moment. It seems the ship is uh, safe in its, uh, its temporary anchorage. Um, so you guys start heading, uh, heading out the gate. Um, and sure enough, it seems that this... Uh, keep has been isolated and abandoned for quite some time. There's no uh, obvious signs of any, any big roads leading anywhere. Um, the path down to the beach is the closest you really have. Um, and even then, that's uh, more of a natural thing than uh, maintained at all. Um, so, Havel, you take lead on this. Um, and having got an idea of where this uh, um, village is from the captain's chart uh you reckon that the the best way of doing this is probably going to be sticking fairly close to the coastline um it's going to be probably about day and a half two days something like that um depending on the kind of terrain you encounter so um Kind of leading on, um, you guys start your uh, your journey southeast. So staying along the uh, kind of tops of these cliffs, you actually get a, a fairly you know scenic route as you uh, as you go along. Um, being close to the edge, the forests and stuff aren't all too thick, and you're able to uh, 
Uh, keep your eyes to the sea. Um, as you uh, as you keep travelling, uh, every now and again you see a, a sail in the far off distance. Uh, whether it's a uh, a ship coming or going from Scarfland or Landfall, you can't really tell. Um, but it seems that this stretch of water is uh, reasonably traversed. Um, so after a while, you guys come to a uh, appears to be a, uh, a kind of cavern in the, uh, the cliff face. Um, It appears that this uh, has been inhabited at some point. You can see that there's uh, kind of remains of broken up flotsam and jetsam scattered around the uh, the entrance. Um, the problem is you're at the top of the cliffs and this is down by the waterfront. How far down? Probably about 40, 50 feet. What do you think? Worth uh, taking a little look? Uh, it's kind of too tempting not to. So the uh, the cliff is pretty jagged at this point, so you do have quite a few handholds um, to work your way down. Um, however, as you start getting down towards the uh, kind of 15, 20 foot up mark, the, uh, the rocks start to become quite a treacherous. They're slippy with uh, kind of seawater and what appears to be seaweeds and algae of various descriptions. Um, so, Rulan, if you're leading the way, I need you to make me an acrobatic save. Oh, check, please. Ooh, that's not good. Uh, 13. Okay, so uh, it takes you longer than you would usually um, scale a, a distance like this, but uh, erring on the side of caution, um, you take the time to double-check each step you take. Um, and it pays off. One, uh, one footfall uh, lands on a particular patch of kelp that comes loose under, uh, under your shoe. Um, with two hands firmly on the rock face, though, you manage to kind of brace and uh, support yourself without falling. Um, you know, pointing that out to your uh, your companions, they uh, they follow in your footsteps down, and uh, you guys find yourselves now at the entrance to what appears to be a um, kind of a small uh, kind of grotto hollowed out over time by these waves. Um, and yeah, you can see that. Uh, there's evidence that somebody here was uh, um, at one point using this place as a, uh, as a camp. You can see broken up pieces of uh, wood that suggest there might have possibly been a shipwreck at some point. Um, and leading back into this cave, it's, it's not a huge cave, it's probably only about 20 feet deep. Um, you see what appears to be uh, a set of skeletal remains and a, uh, and a makeshift camp. Take a look around, see if we can uh, find out who it might have belonged to. Or... Sure, uh, roll me an investigation. Yes, that is a thing. Eighteen. Okay, so uh, taking a glance at the skeleton, you can see that uh, this was a human. Um, probably estimate that he was middle-aged when he died. Um, you can also see that these bones have been here for some time. Um, they're not in particularly good shape. Um, and looking around, you can see that he's uh, accompanied by his meagre possessions, which uh, don't really count so much. There's a small leather pouch, but on looking at it, you can see that it's uh, pretty much empty. Um, 
save for a, uh, a kind of a very cloudy green bottle with a uh, an old cork stoppering the top, and only a uh, only a very uh, kind of small amount of liquid still left in it. Um, However, what's most interesting to you is actually the uh, the wall of the cave. Um, it appears that he is at some stage carved into this stone. Um, a scene of some sorts. Uh, he's clearly no no artist by uh, by anybody's um, stretch of imagination. Um, but from what you can see, these carvings clearly depict a ship. Um, a ship being attacked by something. Something large and something with tentacles. Oh no. Oh. Mickey, it's a little out of proportion, isn't it? There's our uh, friend the Kraken, maybe. What would we, I don't know, estimate how old all this is? Uh, probably need a medicine for uh, for that kind of detail. Eight. Hard to say, really. Um, clearly not too long because the bones uh, in this kind of wet and... Uh, wild environment probably uh, wouldn't last for centuries um, but you can't really put a finger on it it's at least a few years though uh, again you can't really tell okay I'll uncork the bottle as well and just like take a sniff so uh, you take a take a whiff um and actually, Rul, it's uh, quite surprisingly something you recognise. It's a um, it's a, a kind of nice white wine of uh, Ilafari vintage. Is there anything left of this guy's clothing or personal effects other than the leather pouch with the bottle? You uh, you can see that there are a few scraps. Um, of cloth left. Most of them seem to be torn beyond any you know, chance of working out what the garment originally was. But you see a few um, colours um, in there. And from the from some of the dyes you can see, you can see that this person was clearly reasonably influential enough to be able to afford um, you know, kind of fancier dyes than most. And if I cast my memory back, what was the last thing I remember Conrad wearing? That's funny you should say that. You could have sworn he had that, uh, that shade of uh, of red on his shirt. Oh. Conrad. Wait, what's going on? We believe we have the remains of our friend Conrad. Um, can I try casting Identify on the bones? Uh, more tells you that they're bones rather than whose bones. Okay. <laughs> I suppose if they're dead, they don't need them anymore. Oh, man. Well, it's um, like think... we suspected, I suppose. We did unleash something pretty nasty into the world, and well, which is what happens when we go meddling in things. Indeed. Um, is there anything I can deduce from the bones? Um, uh, roll me a medicine then, Tarak, as you have a look closely. Can I argue history because I am an archaeologist? Uh, he's not been dead that long. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I need that time machine. 
All right, that's uh, 13. Okay, so uh, looking at the bones, you could see that um, he clearly has a uh, quite nasty break um, in his, his right leg, just above the uh, right knee. Um, appears that that was, that was done with you know, something with quite a lot of force. Um, you also reckon that the, you know, the, the bones are uh, a little bit um, kind of brittle, and that suggests to you that he might have uh, been suffering from starvation at his time of death. Oh, shit. Or at least malnourishment. Oh, my God. What a trauma impact. Seems uh, he wasn't doing so good around the time he died. Probably starving or low on minerals at the very least. Calcium. Milk is very important, Triss. I just don't like it, okay, Tarek? I just don't like it. <laughs> you need it to grow big and strong. <laughs> still bigger than you. Probably not stronger, but I am still bigger than you. Uh, yes, yeah, so as you uh, sit and contemplate the uh, the tragic fate that Conrad's uh, Conrad met, Torek, uh, you can't help but feel slightly responsible. Um, it seems that he, uh, you know, probably found himself washed up here and then with his injuries unable to uh, make his way up the cliff face. Well, I think the least we can do is uh, is give him a burial. And, uh, I'll take out like a, I don't know, a spare bedroll or something and just like wrap up his bones. Uh, sure. So you uh... find a nice spot up uh, up in the forest for him, maybe. He carefully and with a reasonable amount of respect take up his uh, his bones and uh, secure them for transport. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I don't think we've got uh, any liquor on us, but uh, we'll make a toast to Conrad next chance we get. <laughs> Yeah, deserved better than this. And uh, we'll, we'll eventually, I suppose, bring the news back to Bayford. King won't be too happy, but he's probably got other things on his mind. Hopefully. Tor did you keep a copy of the copy of the contract that we made? Of the deal that Conrad made with Lord Bernard? I know we made the forgery. But That's did we a make very a very interesting question? <laughs> did we have another copy of the copy of the copy? <laughs> I mean, if we if if we were given an original contract, I'd be carrying that. But I I don't think I explicitly made a copy of an original contract. Because you know, I suppose the humans were relying on receiving the mages from the empire, which obviously Conrad never made it back, so the deal was never confirmed. You know, timber for mages. To help fight the dwarves. We should there's, probably there's a chance uh, we could still make it right with Conrad and finish the mission that he was assigned to do. Indeed. Might need to head back to uh, to the Empire at some point and perhaps obtain a second copy to bring back up north. Maybe might be worthwhile. I think it's absolutely worthwhile. We have 
other things to attend to right now, at least. So, I can uh, head back up the cliff and give Conrad a burial and then carry on. Okay, so you guys uh, scale the cliffs um, and try and look for a suitable spot. Um, it's not easy. The, the ground is, is rocky this close to the shore. Um, you have to go into the forest quite a, uh, quite a while before you find somewhere that's uh, going to be easy enough to break ground deep enough for a good grave. But uh, you do find somewhere eventually and uh, start digging. Does he have any uh, identifying features on his body? Maybe like a signet ring or anything that we could take as proof? Um, so, yeah, you do notice that there is a signet ring um, on his left hand. So you uh, you take that guy and you pocket it. Excellent. Um. That's be nice. I will take from my pack Yendorn's prayer book, which I still have, and I'll uh, say a quick burial prayer over the grave. Okay, so uh, with the bones freshly interred um, in a small kind of cairn of loose stones placed at the head, um, you recite a. Uh, a few verses from Yendel's prayer book. Um, you never really found out if Comrade was a religious man, but uh, you uh, feel comforted yourself when, uh, when you're reading this. Um, he may have deserved better, but sometimes life uh, has other plans. Sometimes Krakens have other plans. Um, so, uh, with that concluded, you uh, feel like you know you could now at least know for sure what happened. You get a sense of almost closure. <coughs> okay. Continue on. I mean, what time of day is it now? Uh, so, after this, it's starting to get a bit dark now. The uh, night's closing in. Um, probably cost you about half a day. We can uh, set up a camp, maybe, or try pushing on. Camp. Camp sounds like a sensible idea. Yeah, there's no sense pushing on in non-roaded terrain. Yeah. Well, if it is then. Okay, so uh, you guys set up camp um, a little bit closer to the, um, to the cliffs. Uh, so you string up, you string up some uh, shelters kind of between the trees. Um, now it protects you from the worst of the elements, but being this close to the sea, you do get quite a uh, quite a strong wind. Whipping against the fabric of your, uh, your tents. Um, so yeah, you guys um, get your heads down. The uh, night is remarkably uh, beautiful out here. The sky is uh, it's pretty clear actually, and with no. Um, Kind of clouds in the sky, looking out from the cliffs down towards the uh, the sea with the, the light of the moon on it is uh, you know worthy of a, uh, a painter's easel, definitely. Brilliant, Romeo perception. Uh, Sixteen. As the others sleep, and you are. Uh, meditate into the night, you get an uneasy suspicion that you're not quite alone. Hmm. 
Well, it's dark at this point, then, yeah. It is, yeah. This is come middle of the night. I'll, uh, who's lying, like, or sitting next to me, lying next to me nearby? Someone I can just quickly reach out to. Closest to you is Braxton. Okay. I'll give Braxton a little a subtle nudge. And then kind of do like a, you know, like a shushing motion. So to say, like, I don't think we're alone. I'm not sure what it is, but there's uh, something out there. Any idea of direction? If I start paying more attention, can I get any more details? Anything? No, it's it's more of a gut feeling. Okay. No, not sure. It's like a like a sixth sense kind of thing. Um. Okay. So since we're talking about sixth sense, the senses, can I um? Do a divine sense to see if there's any. Just lost the spell. One second. Uh, celestial fiend or undead within sixty feet. Uh, Braxton, there are undead within sixty feet. Oh shit. Um. Rule and I'm detecting undead. Very close. Okay. With that, I think uh, subtle time for subtlety is probably a bit over. We need to get everyone up. I'll start slowly going around, keeping an eye on the forest around us and just start nudging everyone awake. Quiet. Did we have uh, got some nasties? Mm -hmm. Braxton's detected... Uh, some undead. Not sure where exactly, though. But close. Within 60 feet, so very close. So you guys uh, take up your weapons and uh, cast your gaze around the uh, immediate vicinity of campsite. The forest oh. is... Uh, yeah, yeah, just what you would expect from a quiet forest. Um, oh, hang on. The, I'll um, turn around and look towards the cliff. Uh, so, Rulin, you, you kind of turn your back to the others and face the cliff and uh, cast your gaze out to sea. Um, so, yeah, the forest is uh, is quiet. The, the wind going through the trees is really the only noise you can hear. Um, the clatter of branches being blown into each other, um, and you guys keep your keep your eyes trained into the kind of murky darkness of the woods. Everybody, wrong your perception. Fifteen from me. Oh, I did two, so I'll reroll. Uh, Twenty-eight from me. <laughs> uh, that is good, but you are facing the wrong way. Just had to be make sure there was nothing coming up behind us. Swap five for me. Yeah, five. So, uh, as you guys keep a uh, an armed readiness and uh, cast your eyes out into the uh, into the woods, um, Torek, you uh, you could have sworn you just saw something moving between. A couple of trees a little further out. But you're not sure what. <laughs> part, part of me is thinking if Torek would just like lose it and just fire a bolt <laughs> into the movement. I, mean... I don't think he's quite that on edge, right? That's not up to us. Fuck okay, it, I shoot a crossbow bolt at whatever just moved. So you um you fire a bolt and uh as you watch it go, you actually see a uh along the flight trail a um kind of billow of mist 
um, as a bolt passes through it, it dissipates. Um, as you kind of pay more attention to it, you watch as it uh, kind of reforms. Um, and this time it's a little bit closer to you, and uh, you actually make out it looks like Conrad. You see his figure, mouth a, a quiet thank you before the, uh, the mist dissipates once more. Uh. Uh. Am I the only one who saw that? Is he? Um, I think Howell saw something. The rest of you uh, watching your own sectors. Yeah, Havel, you uh, you saw the mist. You didn't quite make it out as a figure. Uh, but whatever it was, is clearly shaken Torek a little bit. Uh, it's, it's just mist, mate. It happens. Uh, you, you'll get used to it. Conrad was out there. Yeah, Conrad. yeah, we, we, we buried him. Yeah, he's out there, mate. Always watching us. No, he was... He spoke to me. He said thank you. He was the one making the mist. Can I cast Detect Magic? Because I don't entirely understand what Torek's on about. Um, Triss, so you, uh, you try and get an area uh, kind of scan done. Uh, you detect nothing out of the ordinary. Braxton, is uh, is this island known for spirits? Do you know? Um... I'm not sure mm. it's known for spirits. It's not known for much, really. It's uh, it's not a very well-travelled island. Um, I mean, I suppose maybe he was just a grateful ghost. Ah. Uh, Braxton, are you still detecting anything, or is that...? Um, good question. Yeah, I'll divine sense again. See if I get the same reading. Uh, Braxton, it seems that there are no longer undead within sixty feet. Um, yes, all seems clear now, Roland. Okay. Well, um, you're welcome, Conrad. Now, have a look at the prayer book. The one you used to say prayers for him as we buried him. Yandon's prayer book. Yeah, just you know, be careful with it. I'm going to, um, can I insight the book to see if there's anything amiss? Uh, yeah, go on. Oh! So, Tarek, you, um, you never really were the religious type, but you had to take um, the new Pantheon deities as an optional um, as part of your last year to get a PhD. So you're familiar with sacred texts and roughly how they go. Um, so flicking through Yendorn's uh, old prayer book, whilst it's an incredibly dry read, um, you know, riddled with scientific inaccuracy, uh, it appears that there's nothing outright malicious or uh, unordinary here. Okay. So we can deduce it's not the book. It's not the prayers. Conrad really did just want to say thank you. Thank you to me. Yeah, I thought I'd failed him. Maybe he meant it in an ironic way. I'm glad we've buried him at least. Okay. Um, back to sleep then, if if we can. You guys do that. I'll <laughs> I'll keep watch. <laughs> Sorry, just the thought of Torrent keeping watch. It's a bit of an oxymoron, isn't it? Just the most easily distracted party member on watch. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> 
feels like everyone goes to sleep and talks like, ooh, butterfly, a wonderful specimen of a red monica. And, and just walks oh, off. Stone oh, wall. Genesis actually goes missing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that, or as everyone is trying to get to sleep, all they can hear is a quill scratching away on parchment paper as he just constant yeah. notes like. <laughs> okay. an, an entire army could could march by, and he's just there writing down notes. <laughs> <laughs> you told me to watch. I watched him walk in, and I took notes while they did it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, the rest of you settle back down for a uh, an uneasy sleep. I think the only one to actually uh, properly settle in for night from here on out is Havel, who uh, seems remarkably unbothered. But um, the rest of the night is uneventful. Um, you guys wake up a little bit, uh, a little bit confused, maybe, but. Uh, Rested at least, so uh, you set out with uh, with the sun and uh, continue your uh, your path along the the coastline south and east. So uh, it's slow going still. Um, the um, coast clearly again hasn't been very well travelled. Um, However, the uh, the going is is getting easier because the cliffs are starting to subside to more um, kind of gentle beaches. So uh, about midday, you guys are able to uh, to actually transition from stone to sand, and uh, following the coast becomes a bit easier. Um, kind of walking along the uh, the wet sand down at the uh, the waterline is is quite fast compared to hopping over rocks and tree roots. Um, nice so you keep going. The um, kind of sound of the of the waves is quite soothing as you march, um, and by about uh, mid afternoon, you start to see in the distance a uh, kind of telltale sign of habitation. You can see smoke from uh, various fires coming up. Uh, it looks like you know chimney smoke you would expect to see from uh, from any small village. Um, so keeping on, you guys uh, quite quickly come into sight of what appears to be a, a fairly unremarkable small fishing village. Um, as you draw nearer, you can see that the uh, um, the houses are, are modest. They're of a, what appears to be stone and cob construction, um, thatched roofs. Um, it's not a huge place. You can... Uh, Estimate the population is probably less than 200. Um, so as you approach, you, uh, you can kind of tell right away that the, um, the, the populace appear to be uh, busy with something. Um, so you're able to uh, get quite close um, to the village before anybody really spots you. Um, and you're met really with just, you know, curious stares <laughs> at first. Um, obviously, an adventuring party like yourself is uh, is not something uh, people expect to see around these parts. And the sight of, you know, especially Braxton in his heavy armor, uh, that really starts to draw attention. Um, but as you as you move into the, the center of a village, you can see that there's a uh, uh, kind of a bit of a, a crowd gathered around. You can see that uh, they're kind of busy making a bit of a, a fuss. Seems that you're in the middle of a uh, celebration of sorts. You can see a um, kind of a young woman, probably late twenties, um, kind of sat at this uh, wooden chair in, uh, well, not fancy, but more than you would expect from a, a peasant village level of dress. And people are taking it in terms to walk up and put garlands of flowers over her head and uh, kind of have a chat. Um, but as you get closer, tension starts to uh, kind of shift from her to you. 
um, and before too long, you're uh, finding yourselves pretty much in the center of a, uh, a circle of onlookers. Um, a fairly elderly chap uh, kind of makes his way to the front. Ah, travelers, welcome, welcome. Please uh, make yourselves uh, make yourselves comfortable here. We can't offer you much, but as is custom, we will offer you the hospitality we can. It is rare indeed that we get uh, visitors in these parts. Thank you for the welcome. Uh, <clears throat> we were traveling on a ship through the uh, through the strait when, uh, unfortunately, the ship has taken some damage. We've uh, we've actually come here to ask for help. Possible. Ah, uh, yes, for sea. She is a cruel mistress at the best of times. Uh, we'll ask. We will do what we can. Uh, the uh, ship has a carpenter, but um, they're in need of aged timber to effect uh, repairs to the hull. I uh, don't suppose you would have any available for us to trade for? He uh, um, thinks a little bit. Mm, perhaps some of the fishers might have some spare. Uh, I will ask for you, but uh, I must say I'm not sure. Okay. I Anything will say we we do not tend to we do not tend to log these woods. Well, so what is it your village? Uh does for commerce, for its living. Well, we are humble fishermen. We cast lines from the cliffs and we gather the mussels and the oysters in the bay. It is not much, but it is honest work. Sounds rather pleasant. Humble. We get by. We keep ourselves to ourselves. It is the way our ancestors have always done things. And, uh, seems we've uh, interrupted a celebration of some sort. Uh, what's the uh, big occasion? Ah, yes, Loretta here is due to be married tomorrow. Ah. We, uh, we couldn't be happier for her. Uh, who's the lucky fellow then? Well, he is he is the lord of these parts. Ah. Can I roll an insight on this? Because I'm getting a little bit weirded out. Uh, yeah, sure. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Oh, seems all above but to me. Yeah. You are unable to ascertain any additional information. Oh, that's diplomatic. Roland, are you feeling okay? You look a little bit off colour at the moment. Huh? No, you, you feeling alright? Okay, as long as you're feeling fine. I don't know, you just look a bit under the weather. Ah, never seen you distracted by a pretty woman. Oh, no, just you know. Please, my uh, my esteemed visitors, if you are feeling unwell, please uh, accompany me to my uh, to my lodgings. I will put you up as best I can, and maybe a cup of herbal tea will do wonders for your constitution. Uh, Sounds lovely. Maybe you're right. Yeah. Thank you very much for the offer. So. Um, he beckons for you to follow him, um, and as you do, the, the kind of crowds go by. You can see a couple of children, like you know, staring. Or one of them, um, kind of a small boy, runs up and uh, 
you know, kind of places a hand just cautiously against your shield there, Braxton, almost to check if it's real. Um, but kind of, you know, turning to, to look at him, he, he backs off quite quickly. Um, but this this uh, old man leads you to uh, his hut on the uh, the outskirts of the village. Um, and as he said, it's it's not very large. It's quite a humble place. Um, probably about 20 feet by 10 feet. Um, again, the, the, the construction is simple. Stone and cob with a, uh, a thatched roof. Um, but as you enter, you see what appears to be a uh, whole series of herbs and various other sundries kind of hanging from the roof. Um, he beckons for you to, to sit down as he lights a, a fire in the centre. Um, the smoke leaving through a, uh, a small hole in the, in the thatch. Um, although it's not a particularly efficient chimney, and before long your uh, your eyes are stinging a little bit from the smoke. Um, but he sets a, a heavy cast iron pot over the fire and selects a, a handful of um, assorted leaves, um, which he mixes into some water in the uh, in the pot and gets boiling. So, uh, who is the local lord? Anyway, we might um, pay our respects while we're here. <laughs> Don't worry, that, uh, that won't be necessary. Those, those customs of the mainland are not so strictly adhered to here. But uh, we will pass on your regards to him. And where is he based, this lord? Is there a, a, another town in these parts? or? Oh, the nearest city is Lanfon, but it's a while away. But uh, no, that's that's not where he resides. He he travels quite a lot. Uh, it's very very hard to ever really know where he is at any given time. Huh. He uh, reaches for a a series of kind of crude earthenware mugs and pours a uh, a series of. Uh, of these for you lot and as you uh, as you take this tray you get quite a, a strong earthly smell um from the brew it is a uh well an old recipe from uh, a time before even my father's father but it's uh it does wonders for my old aching bones perhaps you will find comfort in it as well perhaps he uh, takes a mug himself and, uh, and takes a good long swig. Can I try and subtly cast Identify on the contents? Uh, yeah, sure. So, um, Triss, this is a uh, sage and parsley tea. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'm going to take a big swig. So, uh, it's not the nicest tea you've ever had, Driss. Um, oh. You don't know whether there are any medicinal properties to it. Um, but you kind of grin and, and act uh, act nice. It's uh, It's not going to do you any harm at any rate. So please, you must uh, you must tell me of of your travels. It uh, it is not often we get uh, news from the outside world. Um. Well, there's uh, a lot uh, a lot going on. Um, war between the dwarves and the Parthians. Really, uh, gotten quite out of hand. He uh, kind of shakes his head. Such tragedy. Needless waste. Indeed. Um, the wilds getting more and more dangerous. I suppose maybe similar story here. Have you noticed more activity out in the forests? Well, these lands are wild at the best of times. We tend not to venture too far into these woods, but uh, 
so far we seem to have all avoided too much trouble. Yeah, that's good. He um God, takes another deep swig of uh his um of his tea. Um as you're doing this a uh kind of a young lad, probably about twelve, thirteen, um, kind of walks in, um kind of runs over to the uh the old man, um kind of whispers something in his ear. Oh, that is a shame. I'm sorry, my friends, the uh, uh, village, it seems, has no such timber that you're after. Ah, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> Land farm, perhaps, that they have what we need? Perhaps. I, uh, I have not set foot there for quite some time, but uh, it is likely. The boy kind of pipes up. But Papella, why don't they just ask? And before you can really finish that sentence, he, uh, he goes, uh, Hush, Charles, know your place. Let your elders talk. The, uh, the kid, quite visibly scolded, um, you know, steps back, puts his head down, can we get a murmured, Yes, sir. Um, in fact, boy, go and tend to the herbs. They'll need watering. Um, the kid scampers off again. Forgive him. He is a uh, a student of mine, but uh, he is impulsive at times. But give him a few more years and I'll turn him into a first-rate Pella. Just you wait. Which direction did that kid go? Out the door. Okay. I'm going to try and give it a reasonable amount of time and then I would like to follow the child. Um, yeah, sure. So uh, you uh, give it enough time to be discreet and then make a, uh, an excuse about needing to uh, you know, relieve yourself. Um, Lady business. Trist. Yeah, so you... Uh, <laughs> You've, you leave the house um, through the same door um, and you're in luck because this kid clearly hadn't wiped his feet. He's wearing quite muddy shoes. Um, you're able to, to follow him. Um, the um, kind of Lord... What am I saying? Um, sorry, I completely lost my train of thought there. Um, following the kid. Yes, that's it, following the kid. So, um, Muddy boots. He clearly led uh, a small trail up towards a uh, what appears to be a small ish herb garden um, where you can see him kind of bent over and, uh, and tending to some, uh, to some crops. Um, He's clearly quite involved with what he's uh, what he's doing because he doesn't hear you approach. Hi. Let's try not to scare him because I've got a habit of doing that. Mm. So you, you clearly startle him a little bit, um, but he kind of turns to face you and stands up. But uh, he uh, kind of just stares you a little bit. Sorry for interrupting. What are the uh, herbs you've got growing here? Pello says I'm not supposed to talk to outsiders. Oh, okay. Um, how come? Uh, the question clearly actually puzzles him. <laughs> like he's not really sure why, but it's clearly something he's been told and has just just gone with it. Uh, I don't know. I suppose. Hmm. Well, he's welcomed us in and he's talking to us. I don't think it'll do too much harm. Uh, you could see like a flash of genius almost behind the kid's eyes. He uh, kind of grins a little bit. Uh, 
I'm Alfred. What's your name? I'm Triss. It's nice to there we you. are. Not strangers anymore. Guess I could talk to you now. Yeah, it's all a matter of details normally, I find. As uh, so the herbs, yeah. what are you growing here? So he uh, kind of steps aside, and you can see Triss a fairly common um, array of you know, um, various cookery herbs, a few medicinal plants as well. Nothing really wild, what you would expect from a, uh, a kind of a village garden. Um, uh, Perlo just has some, some herbs here that we use to tend to wounds and minor illnesses. How interesting. Um, forgive me, earlier it seemed like you had maybe thought of somewhere else where we might be able to find that wood. Um, do you mind me asking what, what you thought of? Uh, wrong me a persuasion. Okay. Um, seven. I'm sorry if you can hear the dog as well. I don't know, the pillar, he, he didn't, I'm not supposed to say. No, he, he didn't. Um, that's okay. I think he was maybe being a little bit dismissive of you. Um, if you can't tell us outright, could you give us a hint about maybe where we could start trying to look? Uh, again, you see another uh, um, kind of flash of clearly this kid is is got streaks of uh, of cunning in him somewhere. <laughs> Say, uh, lady, you look like you've come from afar. Mm -hmm. Do you have any cool gear? Um, I love how you delivered the line "cool gear" <laughs> as if like. He's heard an adventurer say it once, and it's, he's just replicating it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I've got a couple of things. Um, what kind oh, of thing on. were you asking? Give us a look, give us a look. I'll get out, like, some, some of my daggers and stuff and see whether that looks like it's going to kind of do the trick for him. I mean, there's one thing you could get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's not resort to that yet. Oh, you're talking about the eyeball. Okay, never mind. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay, no, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, you take a few of these daggers out, um, Triss, and he uh, kind of looks over them. Wow, is that real steel? Yeah, do you not get so much real steel up here? Uh, our, our smithy only makes iron tools. He's not very good. Uh, would you like one of those daggers? Yeah, his eyes light up like you've just like promised him the world. Really? One of the daggers. He uh, kind of takes it in his hand. You see him kind of feel the weight and take a few you know, swings in the air. Oh, that's great! Thank you, miss! You enjoy. Don't do yourself an injury with it, though, because uh, I don't want anyone to come after me. Oh, no, I'll be careful, I promise. I thought you would be. They're not, they're not cursed, then, Douglas, are they? No, no. Okay, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, anyway. Get the child the curse deck. <laughs> Send him off to slaughter the village. No, sorry, carry on. I'm not there. <laughs> Do you trust the warlock so little? Do you really want that yeah. question answered? <laughs> I already know the answer, I think. Well, um, um the uh the wedding tomorrow you see, the Lord will be there. Uh Usually when the Lord comes, we uh, we get to ask him for things. I uh, I know you're outsiders, but you might be able to get something. Who is this Lord of yours? I hear he travels a lot. I, I We don't see him often. I, uh, 
I haven't seen him myself. But the, uh, the Peller, he, he teaches me things. He says he's a good, uh, good benevolent lord. Hmm. All right. Well, it's worth us trying, I suppose. Uh, Chris asks the empty field. <laughs> Thank you for not sharing that bit of information with me, and I'll, I'll just, you know, wink him. He uh, winks. He winks back, and then uh, starts playing with a dagger again. So yeah, Tris, you uh, you return to the hut um, where the Vapella has been regaling the companions with. Uh, uh, tales of uh, of last autumn's oyster harvest. Yes, yes, that's very good. Um, more, more, more tea, if that's... Yes. <laughs> the, uh, the pot goes around once more. Each of you gets a, a top-up of, uh, of herbal tea. Sorry about that. I uh, had a couple of things to attend to. I'm sure you understand. He, uh, he nods and, and beckons for you to take your seat and uh, just, just your freshly refilled mug. I... Well, that's... Uh, oh, carry on. Carry on. No, no, it's okay. As I've uh, just been saying to your friends, the, uh, the village would be would be honoured for you to, uh, to stay the night. I'm uh, sure that I can find some people willing to, to put you up. We're... Uh, Having a uh, a bit of a celebratory meal tonight. You're uh, you're welcome to attend. It's uh, it's an honour of a bride to be. Funny you should ask that. I was gonna see uh, ask if it if it wouldn't be incredibly rude for us to to witness tomorrow's celebrations. See, I'm from quite far away, and I'm absolutely fascinated about how you would celebrate differently. He uh, kind of has a. His face goes quite stony. I'm afraid it is not our custom for outsiders to attend weddings like that. It's no judgment of character to you, but it's the way our customs work. I would ask you to adhere to them. Of course. Hmm. Braxton has a sneaking suspicion. Can I do a religion check? To see if I know of any religions where an inverted commas wedding is the wedding of a bride and their deity via the means of sacrifice. Uh, yeah, Romeo religion. Oh, I think that's a fall. Um, so Braxton, you were. Uh obviously are familiar with a series of pagan rituals. Um, kind of comes part and parcel with the uh, the uh, role. Um, however, you can't say you're familiar with any any cultures that practice such uh, kind of uh, ceremonies. Okay. Well, the, uh, the hour grows late. It will be almost time for the feast. He uh, stands himself back up with the, uh, the aid of his stick. Please uh, follow me down to the waterfront. The uh, preparations will be underway, I'm sure. So, um, as you go out, you uh, can start to smell the, the distinct smell of, of seafood being cooked. Um, and as you uh, you follow the pallet down to the, the waterfront, um, you can see a, a series of um, kind of low tables have been set out. Um, however, it seems that they're uh, kind of a little unorthodox in the sense that they're only a uh, a couple of feet off the ground and are actually carved from stone, um, and more akin to benches really. And you can see that the villagers are sat cross-legged either side of this. Um, 
it appears that a, a large cauldron is uh, currently on the go, cooking various uh, shellfish ready for uh, ready for the meal. But uh, with little else to do, the villagers have kind of congregated early, and you can see that tangards are, are being filled and passed around. Um, the bride to be is at the uh, kind of central point of these uh, these tables, and it seems that the village elders are. Uh, closest to her. She's clearly been given the uh, position of honour for tonight. Um, but uh, from the looks of it, it's going to be a, uh, a good party if the, the alcohol's already flowing and the sun's yet to even sink below the horizon. Sorry, I missed a bit, but we are getting stuck in with the revelry. Yeah. Tris asked if we could watch the ceremony tomorrow and we got a resounding no. Ah, uh, okay. That's the main gist of what happened. Sweet. So yeah, you guys are uh, obviously appointed a, uh, a fairly um, low status part of the table um, being outsiders and everything, but uh, the food you're offered is uh, Actually, pretty damn good. The, uh, the shellfish clearly is very fresh. Um, you imagine it probably comes from this morning's catch. Um, and the cook clearly knows what they're doing and has access to a uh, a pretty decent seasoning array. Um, so as you get uh, as you get stuck into uh, kind of you know a, a really nice hot fresh meal, um, you know you start to feel a little. Uh, a little better with a hot meal inside you, and as Tank could start making your way down, you uh, kind of sniff it, and it, it appears it's a mead of sorts, um, quite sweet with the honey. Um, but yeah, the villagers are really just getting stuck in now. The uh, the mead is is flowing pretty freely. Um, Before too long, the uh, yeah you know, the, the feasting is is done, um, and as the sun has started to set, a uh, a bonfire is is lit uh, towards the, the central square, um, and people are people are up and dancing. Um, general revelry. You you guys aren't treated badly per se, but uh, clearly the village is uh, a bit wary of outsiders. Um, so you're left a little bit to your own devices. So, um, how's the uh, bride to be looking at this point? Uh, well, she's uh, clearly enjoying herself. The uh, mead is probably working, but she's uh, in amongst all the the partiers, um, kind of laughing, dancing. Um, the uh, village seems to be making a real, uh, real fuss of her. Can I, can I see if there's any sort of religious symbolism around? Um, okay, sure. So, Braxton, while everybody else is doing this, um, you take a look around the village, um, and you notice that a lot of the houses have various carvings above the door. Um, a lot of it runic seems to be fairly standard peasant uh, superstition, you know, various wards to keep spirits away. Okay. And while I'm exploring the village, do I notice that, like, any sort of chapel or, or similar religious building? There appears to be a burial ground somewhere, a uh, kind of a raised um, kind of barrow. Okay. Um, I, I, yeah, I'll go have a look over there. Do they have headstones or is it just a barrow, basically? Uh, it's a barrow, so there's a kind of a tunnel leading down into it. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I think 
I'll have a look in there if I can if I can access it. Okay, so uh, Braxton, you uh, you walk down, um, and at the bottom you can see that this uh, stretches for quite a while. It's clearly dug out well below the uh, the ground, um, and you can see the uh, the sides are. Uh, Kind of lined with almost alcoves dug into the uh, into the walls, three tall, um, and you can see bones uh, arrayed on these alcoves, um, clearly laid there to rest. You can see that the uh, the bones have been buried with presumably the possessions of the deceased. Um, you can see various little things like uh, tools, um, jewellery, that kind of thing. Um, trinkets that would have been of value or you know, sentimental um, importance to the deceased. Uh, you can see, though, that this is uh, um, quite a, a well-used barrow. It's, it stretches quite far back. Um, you also, Braxton, start to hear... The sound of uh, two voices, kind of laughing and giggling, coming down the uh, the stairs to the barrow. They haven't seen you yet. Um, is, is there some sort of alcove nearby I can just hop into? Uh, so you cast your eyes around and you find a uh, um, a kind of an empty alcove, quite far back. So as you go in, um, the darkness kind of. Uh, surrounds you a little bit and you find somewhere to, to hide um, and just in time because the giggling has, has kind of got louder and uh, as you kind of pop your head around the corner um, you see a uh, kind of relatively young man and woman kind of stumble into the barrow clearly quite intoxicated um, the, the bloke's being a bit handsy and you kind of hear it Kind of a giggle of spell, stop, no, not here. Oh, come on, don't be like that. They're dead, they don't care. No, it's it's wrong, not here. What if I told you that I loved you? Do you mean it? Aye, of course I do. No, Sval. Um, Braxton, you uh, kind of settle in to watch a very uncomfortable scene. Uh, there's no way you're getting past there. You're just going to have to oh, wait this no. out. <laughs> uh oh. Um, okay. Jora is displeased. Right. While while I wait this out, I've got some time um to cast uh clairvoyance. Okay. Um or oh, I'll just bring the spell up. If I can find it. Oh, maybe I don't even have access to it. I'm thinking of uh, clerics. Never mind. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, yeah, Braxton, you uh, close your ears and, and try to remember your vow of celibacy. In fact, actually, we never really established whether that was a, an order requirement. I guess we'll leave that unsaid. <laughs> okay, so the rest of you... Um, After he gets out of the barrow. Mm, yeah, so the rest of you uh, are kind of left in the in the village while Braxton goes off on his little quest. Um, so yeah, the, the party is in full swing. Um, people are kind of you know, laughing, dancing, drinking. Um, it's probably going to go on for quite some time. Um, I'm going to quietly try and let everybody know who's present that the Lord tomorrow is the best option um, for us getting that wood, but I don't know how we're going to do it. What else did the, uh, the kids say? Not too much. Um... There's some definitely weird shit going on around here, but it could just be northerners. Um, 
the Lord so I mean, he wanders. I, the kid hadn't I, met him before, though. A wandering lord who comes into town to marry a peasant girl mm -hmm. just doesn't sound quite right. But, no. Uh, Certainly not Elven. No. But also, I mean, Lanfon's the best, well, closest thing to a city that this island has, and the Lord's not even from there. I mean, where does he, where does he come from? Where else? Oh, I don't buy it. Something not right. If nothing else, I just want to see what happens tomorrow, but I don't know how we get ourselves part of this wedding. Hmm. We still need the wood for the Lasalle. Mm -hmm. So maybe we do need to stick around and ask this lord. But at the same time, the, uh, the villagers don't really want us here. So that was the weird for, thing. For the, the way that kid worded it. Was he grants favours? Or something to that effect? I don't know. There was something... Mm vaguely off about the whole thing with him. <coughs> but yeah, if we can speak to him tomorrow, we might as well stick around until we've given that a try and then if it's no good, head to the city. What happened to the elder that we were speaking to like in his house? So uh, he is amongst the uh, revelers. Um, you can see him, you know, kind of sipping on a tankard. Um, he's not dancing. His uh, uh, cane suggests that he might not be uh, in that stage of his life, but uh, he's uh, taking part in in the festivities. Everyone looks very, very happy. There's no one looking. A bit down about anything. Everyone's happy to be here. Yeah, people are uh, kind of laughing, uh, dancing, joking, um, smiling faces all around. Okay. I'm just going to pick someone at random then just to sidle up to in the crowd and just be like, so looking forward to the, the big day tomorrow. I'm going to roll just to see how inebriated this chap is. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> the uh god looks at you and oh why it's uh it's a big day for sure do you get many cars for celebrations like this in the village every now and again but uh well, there aren't many folk in this village everyone knows everyone you see oh yeah i see how it is there's a lot of, a lot of uh Small villages, very tight-knit groups, like family, almost, yeah. Well, recently, a lot of young uns have been going off to the city for work, but, uh, well, it's their choice, in it? Of course. Um, so, um, what's the, uh, the lucky bride's name, anyway? Oh, that's, uh, that's young Loretta over there. Right. Uh, good as gold, that one. So is every happiness. Of course, I've been, it's certainly quite a tale, you know. A, a young girl from a fishing village marrying a lord of the land. You don't hear about that sort of thing very often. Aye, aye, it is. It's a real honour for her. She's uh, made up about it. So how did she, uh, she meet the lord? How did they fall in love? I bet it's a beautiful tale. I am sure it is, but I'm not privy to it. Oh. Well. Hmm. So, uh, where's the uh, celebration? Where's the uh, ceremony taking place tomorrow? Oh, it'll be at the altar, where we celebrate most things. It's uh, a little way from the village, in the woods, you see. Nice and, uh, and quiet. You're not worried about uh, any creatures off in the woods at all? No danger at all out there, is there? 
Ah, not close to village like that, no. Huh. no. We have it good here. Well, I'm sure it'll be a lovely day and uh, we'll uh, enjoy the celebrations tonight anyway. Uh, cheers to that. And he uh, kind of raises a mug and then uh, finishes the contents of it. Hi. I'll sort of wander off back to the group. <laughs> right. Well, apparently there's a, a ceremonial altar somewhere in the woods near to the village. How do you feel about a midnight stroll? Yeah, Havel, surely this is the kind of thing that you can sniff out. I'm drunk as Havel at this point. Uh, roll me a constitution saving throw. Uh, that'll be a straight 12. A straight 12. So, Havel, um, you have been enjoying the village mead. It's uh, kind of golden flavour. Um, tastes, you know, distinctly uh, like egg yolk. But you've been putting that aside because it's quite strong. Um, you're tipsy at this stage. You uh, you can comprehend what people are asking of you, but you've got a nice buzz. Ah, cool. Ah, I mean, if, if he's buzzed, I, I guess he'll be up for it. Yeah, sure, why not? Been that stroll. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> Oh, I don't know about a stroll. Oh, I've eaten quite a lot of mussels. They're very delicious. Have you tried them? <laughs> uh, well, you can uh, hang on here, Torek, and keep an eye on the festivities, I suppose. Well, maybe Let us know I... if uh, anything spectacular happens. Um, I... <laughs> How do I tell you if anything spectacular happens? Um, I will quickly cast um... mm, remind me what the name is so it is telepathic bond between all of us who are present um, this is where if I were an evil DM I would have all of us who are present apply to the whole village oh god <laughs> <laughs> the party who is present to basically everyone other than Braxton yeah, I was gonna say everyone just hears Havel screaming in their heads. <laughs> ah, the toes are back. Yeah. <laughs> Range thirty feet. Is that... Bollocks! That will not work. Oh, it might work. We'll keep. Oh, no, going. no, no, no! Sorry, the casting range is thirty feet. The communication is possible over any distance. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Perfect. Very cool. That's crazy. Yeah, that's really good. Mm. <laughs> Nice, nice, okay, nice. Braxton. After twenty-five minutes of uh, hunkering down in the in the alcove, the twenty-five uh, minutes. Fucking oh, alcove. Jesus, what a there. champion! <laughs> say, if we are still within thirty feet of Braxton, I'll cast on him as well. He is. He's a little <laughs> further afield, but uh, um, we're down a barrow. Yes, <laughs> poor reception there. Yeah, someone's down a barrow. All right. <laughs> Oh, oh, my bone in your barrow. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Braxton, you uh, you unfold yourself from this alcove and uh, kind of stretch your your limbs, get the blood flowing um, back to your kind of extremities. Um, <laughs> I won't tell you where it's been before. But, uh, <laughs> you uh, you make your way out. You kind of check the coast is clear before you you come out, but. Uh, you're able to slip away undetected and uh, rejoin the party. Hmm. I, I'm not saying a word to anyone. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna arrive. <laughs> Find so, uh... no, hey, hey, Tris. Cool. That's it. I'll just add him into the, the telepathic bond. Okay. So, we're off uh, exploring into the woods, Braxton. I'll be saying this through the telepathic bond, I guess, now. 
Something about uh, a ceremonial altar. Okay. There's uh, an awful lot of remains in, in this barrow. Um, I couldn't really glean much more information before I was interrupted. Well, I mean, isn't a barrel where remains are supposed to be? Yes, but for a small village, this one seems disproportionately busy. Hmm. Well, small fishing village like this, and accidents and... You weren't caught, <coughs> were you, down in the barrow? Oh, no. Oh. You were gone a while. Yes, um, some people came in in the barrow for a short while, uh, but I managed to hide away from them until they made Very their poor choice of words there. Yeah, I thought that as soon as that came out of my, my mouth, I was like, oh, no. We all give each other a bit of side eye. So, uh, pay, paying their respects to the dead then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's call it that. Sure. Right, well... Off to the woods then. They'd say it wasn't too far in, so it shouldn't take us long if we just have a quick scoot around. Who's coming and who's going? Torek's staying, right? Do you want me Torek's to broadcast my endorphin levels as I enjoy this delicious uh, puy de mare? <laughs> Can you cut Torek off the telepathic pond? <laughs> 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 I'd say Torek, uh, Tris, you could understand a lot of languages, but Torek just came out with some prime gibberish. <laughs> I love how you're so set on having French not canonical in your world. <laughs> it's, it's like a weird dialect of abyssal. <laughs> I've good news, I speak abyssal. Well, Torek, just uh, let us know if, uh, as I said, if uh, anything untoward happens. Preferably in common, not that abyssal dialect that you were just speaking. Yeah, he just babbled something about fruit of the sea. I mean, what a fucking stupid metaphor. Everyone knows the sea doesn't have fruit. <laughs> okay. Language made by idiots. But uh, yes, you leave him to his uh, delirium. Okay. Off we go into the forest then. Sneakily, sort of scurrying away from the part from the celebrations without too many people noticing us. I take it the village doesn't really have like a guard kind of thing. It's just no. It's it's not. Uh, <clears throat> um, kind of got anything of that nature um seems that you know you didn't even see uh any kind of signs of them having a, a basic militia either okay. so are there any signs of any like worn paths that lead through into the woods at all yes there is a uh a small um kind of track looks like only a little a bit bigger than an animal path might be. Um, but it leads off down into the uh, into the woodlands. Okay. That's, that's good a start as any for uh, investigating. Shall we uh, head off? Yeah, is Havel contributing to us trying to find this? Or? Oh yeah, Havel's 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 Why not? Mm -hmm. So Havel, you, uh, you very quickly identify but is is in fact a path, and uh, you start leading the others off down it. So you guys wander off down this uh, down this path, um, and quite quickly the forest becomes reasonably uh, thick and dark. Um, it seems that a lot of the trees here are old. Um, a lot of oak, uh, clearly grown for many centuries. Um, a few kind of younger varieties of uh, deciduous trees um, interspersed amongst them. Um, as you wander this path, uh, you kind of pass a, a series of um, 
almost totems, like wooden stakes, but uh, carved decoratively on the side of the path. Most depicting um, almost like animalistic features. Um, like one is clearly supposed to be a, uh, a representation of a deer. Um, another one is a hog. Um, things like that as, uh, as you wander this path. Um, after about 10 minutes, you get to what appears to be a clearing. Um, in this woods, where you can actually see that a uh, a small swamp has uh, kind of pried a place in the, in the middle of this kind of spacious clearing, um, and you can see that in this swamp there is a kind of raised island almost with what appears to be a very old stone altar, um, kind of taking up the middle of that. Take a closer look at the uh, altar. Okay, so ruling the uh, swamp obviously poses very little um, that challenge for you. You skip across the water. Um, as you go, the, the smell makes you quite glad, but uh, you're not having to wade into it. Um, mm. and as you get there, you can see that this is uh, quite an old, worn altar, stone in construction. Um, and quite overgrown. You can see a lot of tangled roots around its base. Um, it appears to be quite weathered, but it's it's similar to what you would find in a lot of a uh, lot of chapels. But it seems oddly out of place here in the middle of the uh, middle of the woods. Doesn't quite, doesn't look quite like a scenic kind of spot for a wedding ceremony. I cast detect magic. <clears throat> uh, you can, Triss. There has been magic here before. There isn't any here now. Is there any anything on the altar? Any inscriptions, runes, of any sort? So along the along the side of the uh, the altar, um, there are a series of scribblings. Um, they are each sylvan. I do not have to speak sylvan or read sylvan. I can comprehend languages. Can you comprehend written languages? Yeah. Okay. I must touch the surface. <clears throat> well, uh, Triss, if you can make your way over here. Okie dokie. We're going through, through the swampy waters. Altar. Okay, Triss, so you uh, kind of tentatively step into this swamp. Um, and as you do, your kind of feet sink a little bit into the mud. Um, it takes quite a lot of effort to trudge forward through this, uh, through this very green water. Um, as you uh, kind of wade your way through... Um, kind of in the midpoint between the, the edge and the island, you're probably just about waist deep. Um, and you uh, try not to think about how this is going to make your clothes stink for, well, probably the rest of their uh, existence. But you put that thought aside and, uh, and continue on the way, um, way out there. Uh, Romeo Perception. Could have levitated over this and I'm making life hard. Um, perception, that's 10. Uh, you feel a, a little nip in your right calf. Ooh. Mm. Tell you what, is the altar on a bit of solid ground? It is. I'm going to just dimension door myself across. Okay, so Rulin, you watch as Triss dimension doors the uh, the last 10 feet between her and the altar. Um, Triss, looking uh, down, you uh, um, you see that uh, a, a leech has attached itself to your, uh, to your calf. <laughs> I'm going to try and... Leeches don't like fire, do they? Why would they like fire? 
I'm going to just produce flame and like waft it around the leech. <laughs> uh, okay, so in doing that, um, which is pretty much the textbook thing of not to do to a leech. Oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> the, leech, the leech drops uh, away, squealing in pain, but it appears to have regurgitated some of the blood it sucked back onto the wound. You're probably going to want to clean that up at some point. Ugh, okay, I'll deal with that in a minute. I'm going to identify on the uh, the language language thing on the... Comprehend. That's the ticket, yeah, on the altar. So the um, the inscription is, is Sylvan, um, but it doesn't flow very, very well. Um, you suspect that the person who carved this probably wasn't fluid in the language. Um, mm-hmm. But it seems to be a almost a prayer of sorts, um, asking for the longevity of the village um, and the you know prosperity of the land. Okay, so it's just kind of typical pagan bullshit. Yeah, it's vaguely reminiscent of the um the the Baron and his situation over there. It is? You know, they were prosperous despite the area and the kind of goings on. Mm. Slightly different circumstances, but yeah, I suppose similar. Um, Is there anything else that I can see on the altar now I'm like up close and personal with it? So you can see there's a wrought iron um, candelabra at one side, um, rusting in places. Clearly, uh, the elements around here aren't kind to it. Um, the stone surface as well bears a clear sign of weathering. Um, this has obviously been here for quite some time. But uh, no, that would no line up to... with uh, being a barrel with a lot of remains in it. The village has been here a long, long time. Okay. I mean, this isn't anything to be concerned about, really. I mean, you know, a lot of villages have these kind of strange. Rituals, ceremony type things, beseeching the gods to keep them safe. But for these people, it seems to have worked at least. But still, uh, still have some reservations about this lord. It seems, first of all, very strange that we would be completely kind of put away from seeing a wedding. You know, it's a wedding. But also the Lord who travels and then grants wishes and demands when he does come by. I mean, we've seen it with the likes of you know the wizard who had the tower in that village. You know, mm-hmm. a stranger comes in with some great magic power, helps out the village, and they treat him like a Lord. Something similar to that. I mean, in their case, it was very beneficial and everyone was quite happy to allow it all to happen. Could just be the same thing here. We may be worrying over nothing. Whoever this, or whoever or whatever this lord is, uh, maybe, you know, he's just uh, in love with a peasant girl and they're getting married. It may just be as simple as that. Unusual oh. that their love story isn't widely broadcast amongst other villagers. We all know how villagers work. There's very few secrets, usually. I don't think there are many villages on this island, really. I mean, the captain said this was the only village within what I mean the, is the area on their charts. For a village not to know all of the gossip about how the Lord fell in love with oh. the village girl well, is yeah. very unusual. True, but it's not to say that it's dangerous or untoward. Wonder if we can uh, hide out and witness what's going on tomorrow. 
Um, well, I mean, it's a swampy forest. There's probably plenty of places for us to hide out. Yeah, there are leeches in this water, so let's find some. Well, there are also there. trees we could hide in. Quite thick foliage on the trees and whatever you'd say, Crispy. Yeah, the forest is thick. Um, also, on one side of the swamp, there are a, a series of quite tall um, kind of reeds, and uh, you reckon you could probably hide pretty well in those if you want to be closer. I mean, we're not going to be able to persuade the people to let us stay. They were quite adamant, I think, about us not being present for the ceremony. So, as long as we kept our distance and stayed in the reeds, we could observe what's going on. Maybe get a chance to uh, speak to the Lord at some point, maybe, and ask him for help. That is what we came here for, after all. Yeah, I think it's worth a try. I'll relay this information back to... Oh, we can all just relay this information back to Rick, because he was part of it anyway. <clears throat> How go the muscles, Torek? Torek is uh, currently being like regaled by the village children. Um, having never seen a gnome before a... Uh, a beard is kind of child sized individual is uh, quite a novelty to them. Um, especially once they kind of saw a few of his gadgets and gizmos. Oh, oh, go on, mister, show us another trick. No, uh, but very well, but no poking this time. <laughs> I promise, mister. Very well. <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll just use. Um... My, uh, I'll cast fireball at fifth level. <laughs> <laughs> Behold, children! <laughs> Fire! <laughs> I'll um, uh, I'll, I'll do some magical tinkering. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I'll I'll protrude like a uh, small metal um instrument out and go, so what's the naughtiest word we know? I'm back! <laughs> uh, the pen starts uh, feeding back the recording of the child going, come back! Come back! Come back! <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the kid. <laughs> so the kid like, starts replaying this and is just like over the moon with it. You can imagine the mischief that a, a kid's going to get up to with... Uh, a uh, kind of mobile profanity repeater. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> That's well worth a slot of magical tinkering for now. <laughs> oh yeah, imagine how heartbroken they're going to be when Tarek revokes it and it just stops working. Yeah. They'll, think, they'll think they broke it or something and just yeah. uh, be inconsolable. He's just going to be like, ah, I'll take that, just rips out the batteries. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, actually, I love how reflavoring that Tark would actually have to come back and take the batteries out. <laughs> yeah, rules wise, I do have to touch touch it to get to change it. So. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, so uh, yes, you uh, you create a few things before uh, you hear this um, kind of information being relayed back to you. Uh, what information was that, sorry? The uh, stuff about the altar in the swamp. Ah, oh, that doesn't sound very good at all. Um, There's leeches. Leeches? Mm -hmm. Have any of you been bitten? Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh dear. I take it as you're not going to do anything about that. Yeah, it vomited on me. It was gross. Uh, leeches? Do they have a gag reflex? Can I do a nature roll? <laughs> yes, you may. Twenty-two. So, um, leeches of the uh, most common variants tend to uh, 
be held in uh, particularly high disgust by most adventurers. Um, obviously, their uh, blood-sucking nature doesn't really endear them. Um, there are many different ways of getting uh, getting leeches off. The preferred method is to um, sprinkle salt over it, um, at which point it will kind of almost release itself and drop away. Um, lesser but still reasonably common methods involve pulling um, the leech away, which can work, but it does often leave a chance of breaking a bit of its jaw and leaving that in the wound. Um, you're advised never to burn off a leech, though, because it will involuntarily... Um, Kind of disgorge any blood it has drank back into the open wounds, um, leading to quite often quite nasty infection. Is this genuine survival advice? This is genuine survival advice. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Shite. Well, this is a good teaching lesson for me and Tris. Cool, cool. And for, uh, the tropical swamps of Cumbria. <laughs> Your joke, don't fall in the canal, there are leeches. <laughs> speak from experience. Um, okay. Um, probably should have taken it off a more subtle way there, Tris. I'll have to look it over for infection. Now, the altar, what kind of layout has it got? Has it got surrounding pillars, perhaps? Does it suggest a place of worship, or is it more of a, um, you know, just like a meat slab? So, lone standing pillar, um, the base of which is uh, overgrown with quite old roots. Um, other than this candelabra, it is just a stone slab, really. Do I know any history about this uh, in relation to, to especially the candelabra? Um, go for it. Get okay, plus fifteen to this roll. There is no way I'll fuck it up. Yeah, uh, twenty-two. <laughs> Fucking hell. So um, candles are often used in pagan rituals. Um, some uh, kind of shamans, medicine men, and pellers often uh, make their own candles, um, infusing various herbs and incenses into the wax, um, adding a, a kind of a more mystic atmosphere to the ritual. Ah, it, it could be that those candles have a significance. Could anyone get closer to them? If, if, they're, if they pertain to a ritual, they should have some uh, components mixed into the wax. Uh, uh, I had a gnome in the old academy who insisted on using uh, an extract of wasp for his uh, candles. Strange person. I'll uh, have a look at the candles, and if I need to cast Identify, I'll do that. So currently, the candelabra doesn't actually contain any candles. It mm. is just the uh, the metal holder. Is there any wax left around the candelabra? Uh, yeah, you can see that there's some old wax on it. Um, seems to be clear in nature. Can I cast identify on the wax to see what the components might be? Um, yeah, sure. So you uh, have a wonder. It seems that some myrrh has been infused in this wax. There you go, Tarek. So what was that? Myrrh and what else? Just myrrh. Ah, myrrh. Um, I don't know. Ask the paladin. Is there any religious significance to myrrh? This is spelled all weird, isn't it? While Torek contemplates the spelling of Mer, I'm going to do a religion check to see what sort of significance it, it holds within religions. Sure. That's better. Uh, That's a uh, 20. It's in gold. I can give you one. So, yeah, Mer is, Mer is often burnt as incense in temples, um, largely as a um, aroma, really. Rather than for any significance, it does uh, um, kind of make the, the temple smell a lot nicer, especially after the unwashed masses have come to pray. Um, there are certain certain ministers who will tell you it's good for spirituality, but uh, it's an unverified opinion. Um, what you do know, Braxton, is it is not very uh, not very cheap to buy, nor is it uh, produced locally. 
these uh, mm-hmm. these peasants would have had to have traded for it, and it would have cost them quite a lot. Okay. Um, Torque, nothing much in terms of religious benefit. Um, it's more for the aroma, but it's it's not cheap. I don't know how they will have got it here. Hmm. So they've clearly spent a lot of resource in order to deem of a mystical nature, but um, I guess that doesn't tell us too much, does it? Yes, but the question is, where do they get the resources from to afford this? Indeed. Perhaps it belongs to the Lord. Is anything happening at the party? Um, so by this point, people are pretty pissed. Um, the dancing is much less coordinated. Quite a few people are just, you know, slumped up against walls, kind of snoozing. Um, the bride to be is uh, retired. Clearly, again, quite uh, intoxicated. A few of the elders are sitting around chatting. Um, they seem to have probably drunk less when they're a, a younger um, kind of uh, compatriots here. Yeah. Hmm. Do you reckon I should do some sleuthing? Of all the people to do sleuthing, probably. Probably Torek's the one who would enjoy it the most. (laughs) (laughs) If you feel like you uh, can learn something, Torek, then yeah, go for it. Hey Siri, play Axel F. My thoughts are that, um, well, we don't have any significant answers from anyone, and I feel like probably the best person to get them from would probably be the bride, right? Yeah, potentially. Yeah, but she's likely to be under the closest scrutiny. Mm -hmm. Very true. Hmm. Either that or I just sit on my ass and wait for you to get back. Any of the bride's parents are around, because they're bound to have opinions. Oh, actually, that's quite a good question. Could go over and uh, thank them for the uh, for the wonderful hospitality and uh, see where the conversation goes. Okay, Torek, so you uh, kind of make your way over to uh, where this kind of circle of the, uh, the elder members of the village are at, and enjoying the warmth of the fire. Um, and they uh, kind of welcome you. Um, somebody refills your tankard. Um, yeah, splendid. Um, <laughs> I don't suppose there's any more of that tea going around. <laughs> The uh, the Pella um, uh, chuckles a little bit. Uh, uh, wrong time of day for that, Master Gnome. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. It's wrong freezing. <laughs> yes, well, that's uh, that may be, but there are more than one ways to uh, to warm oneself. I believe this mead in suitable quantity will do quite the job. Torek bites his tongue in in just bef- as he was about to inform him that actually alcohol consumption would uh, constrict the uh, <laughs> the atrial <laughs> um, a diameter and cause you to get colder. But whatever. <laughs> um, but yes, the the hospitality has been rather excellent. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, especially as a as a stranger. It is um, blessed to receive such um, warm reception. Well, it is good that you have uh, stumbled across us at such a fortuitous time. We uh, we are truly blessed to have such a 
a bountiful harvest this year that we can make merry and share our fortune with others. Indeed, indeed. Prosperity is a good thing to share, especially amongst um especially amongst uh, new peoples and cultures. And uh, I, I, th I thank you from the bottom of my heart. If there's anything I can do in return, let me know. Oh, don't worry, uh, Master Noma. Hospitality has no strings attached to us. We uh, expect no repayment. It is our custom. Hmm. A lot of peculiar customs you seem to have. It is an old village. We, uh, we have many generations to uh, respect. They each have their quirks. We uh, strive to honour them. Mm, indeed, indeed. It's uh, quite fortuitous indeed that, in, as well as a giant harvest, uh, that you um, seem to... Um, persevere um, in such uh, isolation from uh, general uh, society. Uh, you, you say you're such an old settlement that just, uh, as a historian, mind you, that baffles me because 90% of settlements simply just don't make it, and these are tough times. We've been fortunate. The lands here are good to us. The sea is even better. We, uh, we get by. So, the sea is even better, you say? What do you mean by that? Well, he uh, kind of gestures around towards the, uh, the table. The, uh, the sea is, is full of food to be had. We, uh, we do very well off the, uh, the shellfish along the coast. The woods provide game. We, uh, we want for very little. Every now and again we find a, a particularly worthwhile pearl in our shells. We, uh, we do trays occasionally with the outside. Interesting. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's just as a uh, Cthulhu player, I'm just like, ocean? Deep ones? Cthulhu? <laughs> for a second, but I think that's the wrong line of inquiry. Um, and but uh, for the most part, uh, your communication to the outside world is quite limited. Why is that? Why we uh, have little need for what they can provide. Mm. We don't see the need to draw unwarranted attention to ourselves. We're doing well here, and we intend to keep it that way. Well. The way it always has been. Well, I can understand wanting to preserve it, but uh, what I don't understand is, as you say, it is a good thing to share in such prosperity. Your isolationism almost seems contradictory. Hardly. We share to those who are in need, but we do not feel obliged to go out and evangelicalize ourselves. Others must fend for themselves. It is only right, only fitting, that other settlements must care to their own. But any guests in our village we will take under our protection. Um, it seems that you're a, a village that doesn't seem to have uh, protection in the uh, traditional ways. In what ways do you offer protection? food, shelter. We're a village that does not need protection in the traditional ways. There are no threats here. Why we keep not? to ourselves. Huh. Well, uh, Torek actually just goes, why not? Just like a kind of way of asking, you know, that, that the world is literally full of horrible monsters, why are there none here, kind of thing. We, uh, we have no riches, so Men, elves, and dwarves see no reason to trouble us. We do not involve ourselves in political or religious affairs beyond our village. 
and what of monsters? They care okay. not for your riches. They do care for your bounty, the natural resource of this place. It seems odd to me that larger creatures are not here. As I say, the, the woods have been good to us. We, uh, we need not worry, but we do not stray far, for they are not ours to walk. Mm -hmm. uh, in telepathic communication, I'm going to... Um... I'm going to um, tell the party theory. Perhaps the uh, podium uh, that you've discovered is some kind of protection spell. Or a way of casting one. Because it, it occurs to me that um, it, it, the contradiction here is that there is no wild beasts in the area causing havoc. After all, it's such a wonderful place. Food is abundant. Why wouldn't the large monsters migrate here? There must be something keeping them at bay there. Unlikely that they wouldn't have found their way here in some mm. way. Um, actually, considering it's in like swampy woods and stuff, um, because Havel, like how he came to know about the forest and stuff, was from uh, what do you call it? The word eludes me now. Dryad. Would he know much about any pagan rituals to do with the forest? Um, yeah, Havel, so um, like, you kind of learned a reasonable amount from your uh, kind of contact with the Dryads. Um, so their whole thing is that uh, you know, Dryads are a dwindling species now uh, nowadays, um, especially with the expansion of the uh, humanoid races into the wilds. But uh, they're often seen as guardian forest spirits. They... Um, Kind of watch over certain areas of woodland and are uh, rumoured to uh, know the way to the Feywild. So, uh, is there any check Havel could do to see if that pillar or the candelabra is anything that he might have come uh, across? Yes, Rami history. Eh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> it's an eight. Um... So the stone stat structure is not something you're familiar with. However, the wooden totems on the path up to here were something that uh, you've seen in a few villages dotted around. A reasonably common paganistic uh, totems. It's, um, well, oh, I'd relay that they're like they're common, but it's, it is definitely a pagan, like known totem. Like, it's, it's something he's come across before. Yeah, to everyone else, just so they're aware, it's definitely a uh, something pagan here. If they didn't already figure it out. The last question I think I'll ask this guy is uh, does you, surely your protection does not come at a price? Uh, does it? A price? What do you mean? Well, I mean that the world is a very big place, especially these days. It's a curious thing. I am an archaeologist and I've seen creatures long thought extinct coming back. And yet, here in this quiet corner of our giant world, a small corner of paradise, as if isolated from the rest of the danger, it is hard to believe that this is accomplished without some kind of input. Perhaps that is so, but uh, if it is, we do not feel this cost all too heavily upon us. Insight. <laughs> I'm going to plus five from Genius. Uh, 
So that's a 10. Um, <laughs> so you can't really tell. You think that he's probably being a bit cryptic with you. Mm. But you can't really work it out either way. I don't think I'm going to be able to extract too much out of this conversation anymore. And I um, think I'll terminate it there and then I go, well, either way, I, I do hope that that keeps up for you. Thank you again for the celebrations. I'll keep further indulgences out of the cider. So uh, they, they kind of nod to you and, and bid you good night. Um... By now, things are starting to wrap up in the village. Parties dying down as uh, people are kind of stumbling off to bed. Okay, so the rest of you back in the uh, in the swamp. So Tarek's relayed whatever it was that he's learned. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'd like to imagine that torix has got the brain capacity to relay real-time conversations he's having. Yeah. Just leaves the chat loads. <laughs> yeah. It'd be funnier if we were only getting Torix's side of it and not the other side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or it's just like, you know, like Torix's like, voice sounds like overtly handsome and then like whoever he's talking to is just like Torix making fun of someone's voice voice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we don't need any input. We're very happy here. <laughs> <laughs> Unable to process other people's like just enjoyment of life. And then Trist turns off the bond, so you just actually just say it back to the guy who's talking to you. <laughs> oh dear. <clears throat> yeah, so you guys... Um... Back in the swamp, here of that conversation. Hmm. Okay. I oh. expect that there is something going on, uh, but uh, let's go back to looking for our wood and we'll see what happens. Yeah. We'll, uh, find some spots to uh, camp out, I guess. Well, we don't know what time the ceremony is even going to be tomorrow. I could be, could be waiting all night and all day. Mm. Let's get Torek to find out if he can from someone. Torek, quick, quick. <laughs> wanting to move the way. I'm sorry. What do you want me to do? Just quickly we'll find out what time the uh, the ceremony will be. Feel free to tell them that uh, the, we want to be making sure that... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I've got the window open and I'm... Make sure that you were cleared out. Uh, yeah, because they don't want us there. Find out what time the ceremony is tomorrow. Tell them that we want to make sure that we're gone before it starts or something to that effect. Uh, okay. So, I'll, I'll probably go to, to the um, first person we talked to upon arriving at town. What was he, like a mayor and not... Oh, no, that, was, um, yeah. that was the Vapella, kind of a um, kind of medicine man. Ah, okay. Yeah, I feel that um, I'd probably go to him for that information. Um, it, it, as long as he's available. Yeah, so he was with the group you were talking to. Um, so uh, he kind of, you, you tell him, you know, you guys want to be out of the village's hair in time. Um, he goes, well, you needn't, uh, needn't worry about that. It uh, it will take place at dusk. Very well, then. Um, thank you, gentlemen. And ladies, I don't think I've been talking to any. <laughs> Concerned that Tarek isn't sure about that. So, uh, <laughs> yes, you, uh, you bid good night too. Hmm? Okay, so, um, 
the rest of you, I suppose, probably going to make way back to the village. Yeah, might yeah. Well do. Okay, so yeah, because everybody's kind of in bed, you are able to slip back in relatively unnoticed. Um, anyone who does see you is a bit too drunk to really care. Um, so you're on David with Torek. Uh, um, and yeah, by now it is, is starting to get pretty late, uh, or probably early, to be honest. I'm going to brandish my leg at Torek and ask him if he can help with the, the leech situation. Torek, you uh, can see that Triss has uh, kind of got a fairly nasty wound. Um, roll a medicine. Can I help him with that? Uh, yeah, go on. Roll medicine with advantage, Tark. What? Why is the medicine left? I'm not that kind of doctor. Can I just less a restoration, this son of a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> oh! Okay, I'm a medical doctor. <laughs> Um, okay, so Tarek, you uh, you can see that this is is getting um, infected reasonably quickly. Um, you can also see that there is what appears to be a uh, um, kind of residual part of the leech um, still in the wound. So uh, you kind of quite quickly uh, and without warning, Triss kind of put your mouth to the leg and start sucking away this uh, kind of infected. Um, tissue and I quite quickly spit it out onto the ground. Um, you then put a uh, kind of a small dressing, um, or well, you kind of smear it with an ointment first, um, and then slap a, a small dressing over this wound. Um, so you've kind of bandaged dress up with an antiseptic, and that should probably stop any uh, serious illness from uh, onsetting. Awesome. So, right. <laughs> as, I'm as I'm bandaging it up, I was like, I'll go, I didn't know you could lift your leg up that high. Can you put it over your head? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> for, for scientific reasons. <clears throat> uh, we'll let Braxton you. knows someone who can if she can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Or but uh, but yeah, Tris, the um, kind of a dull aching in your leg is starting to subside a little bit as uh, Torx ointment has a little bit of local anaesthetic in it. Mm. Okay, so uh, yeah, you guys are um, kind of being lodged in the in the Pella's hut, so. Uh, that's uh, that's where you'll be getting your heads down tonight. It seems the village is yeah, kind of um, just making its way to bed now. Will this count as a short rest? Cool. It will. Just casually getting your spell slots back. You know it. All right. So um, the next morning, um, things are a bit slow in the village. Obviously, uh, people are suffering a little bit. Um, but by midday, people are going about their business. You can see um, a lot of the women and children are taking small um, kind of wheelbarrows down to uh, to the beach and running around rock pools and things looking for uh, uh, kind of any shellfish that have been washed in with the evening's tide. Um, you also see a few people, um, again, kind of stood on cliffs and the, the rocks casting lines into the sea. Um, what, you'd, what you'd expect, really, from a, a small village. Interestingly enough, though, none of them seem to have boats. So uh, they're all fishing from the shore. Given what we know about the local sea wildlife, probably not surprising. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the 
the village itself then is is quite quiet as people go about their um, their daily life. You get obviously a few of the elders who are too old for that sort of thing, um, sitting again idly talking in the uh, in the square, things like that. Um, the Peller and his apprentice are, uh, are busy going from hut to hut, casting some sort of blessing with uh, a, a sprig of burning rosemary. The uh, smoke isn't an unpleasant smell, uh, but is quite pungent. But uh, yeah, you guys are again free to, to roam, really. No one's harassing you or anything. Can can I look at the um, barrow again to see if there's any like activity there? Um, yeah, sure. So uh, you make your way back um, again. Cast your eyes both ways before uh, heading down, but no one's around. It's quite uh, out of the way. So you uh, you pop your um, you head down into the barrow and have a check around. Um, and other than a couple of stains that you're not sure were there last time you were here, um, it seems that the area is is pretty much as you left it. The dead remain in their alcoves, um, their possessions so, still with them. So as far as the length of this thing, can I get to the end of like this uh, corridor fairly quickly? It's about fifty feet. Okay. Is there? Uh... Like a a grave area ready but not filled at the end. Uh, there are a couple, yeah. It seems that this was uh, dug to a, a length. Um, you see about seven alcoves. Oh, okay. So it's they, they're like prepared in batch. Okay. Yeah, that's all. That's what I wanted to look at. There. Okay. And yeah, to make to see if people were there getting stuff ready. Yeah. So you know what? Roll me an investigation, Braxton, while you're there. This is seven. Um, so you're not entirely sure, but you suspect that this barrow has been extended over the period of its life. It probably wasn't originally built to this uh, length. Okay. Hmm. So are we just going to find something to keep us busy until dusk? We probably need to stay That's... out of the way. By the way, when you guys were in the forest, did you find any trees that would be good for the wood that the Admiral wanted? Like, it, the reason we're here? Well, None of it's no. aged, so... No. We, need, we need aged timber, so huh. you can't just cut that down. It has to be prepared ahead of time. Are there any... Unless you have a magical way of aging the wood. Oh, man, I wish... <laughs> Although I do, I do have a solution. If um, are there any boats in this place? There are no boats in this place. Oh, uh -huh. they fish over the cliffs. They said, ah. like gather up the mussels and things. Yeah. Cool stuff. Then I'm out of I'm out of ideas. Someone else do something. <laughs> well, I think we've investigated just about. Everything we can. The only thing that's left really is to um, come back here later on, have a look at the uh, ceremony. Then I doubt they're the kind of people that have like a a written record of their whole history, or I don't even know where we'd be able to find something like that. 
a uh, bit more sleuthing. It suggests to me these people have a uh, oral tradition. Very frustrating for historians, let me tell you. Mm. I oh, imagine. Ooh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, um, yeah, there's not really much going on for you guys uh, to busy yourselves with in the village, um, as most of the activity is, is down on the uh, on the shore front. Um, so, uh, really, the day is your own. Um, if you have nothing you really want to do, you could just uh, we could just time warp forward a bit. Um, but that's up to you. Get ourselves into a I mean, position, I suppose, and yeah, just wait. I'm just about to hide out. Mm -hmm. And observe. Okay, so, um, there's nothing is really going on. You guys make your way back up to the, the swamp. Um, and it becomes apparent you've got a, a few choices when it comes to uh, kind of hiding spots. You've obviously got the trees. Um, there are enough of them, and they're you know old and tall. Um, the branches are, and the limbs are pretty thick, so you'd be able to climb up there and, and hide pretty easily. Um, you do also have the um, kind of bulrushes in uh, the, the sides of the swamp. Uh, they would be, you know, enough to conceal you, but the, uh, the added benefit being we are closer to the uh, the altar. Might mean you'd be within earshot of any ceremony. That would be a good thing. So the rushes. Yes, everyone? Yes. Agreed. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what we'll do then. We'll hide in, hide in the reeds and the rushes. Does anyone want any potions? I'm okay, you thank you. Uh, not thinking for sneaking. You saying I'm not sneaky? <laughs> yeah, maybe actually that's not a bad idea. Nothing for sneaking, but uh, if things go poorly, I can. Uh, I've I've got a few backup plans. Okay, so you guys. Uh... Pick a, a spot in these uh, these bull rushes and try and make yourself as comfortable as you can, um, which isn't easy with water up your ankles. Um, but it does look like these are going to be a very good hiding spot. They uh, are easily tall enough to conceal you. Um, you can kind of get a glance at the, uh, the rest of the swamp and the altar. Um, through them without too much trouble. Um, also, the kind of gentle rustling of them with the wind means that you know any sudden movements are probably not going to give you away. Cool. So, uh, you guys get uh, get into position. Um, yeah, behind some of these reeds and uh, begin to wait. So, um, as the day draws by, the uh, kind of swamp. Remains eerily quiet, um, kind of ribbiting of a few frogs, but you can't really see them. Um, more just hear them a little bit. Um, but as the as the sun sets and darkness starts to uh, finally settle in, um, you guys start to see a series of small pinpricks of light um, making their way up 
this path. So uh, keeping your heads down and as quiet as you can, um, you watch as a procession from the village uh, makes its way to the edge of the swamp. Um, you can see at the, at the forefront the, uh, the Pella uh, is leading the, uh, the bride-to-be. Um, now, the way you get to the edge of the swamp, they, uh, they stop for a moment, and two uh, kind of fairly burly fishermen uh, step forward and lift the, the bride up, uh, kind of forming a, a makeshift chair with their, uh, their arms and shoulders and carry her over the swamp water, um, doing their best to keep her, her wedding dress free from the waters um, and move towards this altar. When they get to the other side, they, uh, they place her down um, and then respectfully take a few paces back into the swamp. You see the Pella wade forwards to the aisle as well. The rest of the villagers, however, um, kind of spread themselves out in a semicircle in this swamp. Um, they get to about waist deep, and you can see that each of them holds a candle. The uh, the Pella steps forward and takes a, uh, a series of these candles out of his bag and starts to insert them into the, uh, the candelabra and light them. Um, when he's done that, you uh, can kind of see him step backwards a little bit and uh, he reaches out and in his right hand he takes the, the bride's left hand and they both kneel before this altar and place their, their hands upon it, um, bowing their heads slightly in what appears to be a prayer of sorts. Um, you notice that the, the rest of the congregation are, are also praying um, in the swamp. The uh, prayers last for a few, a few minutes, but uh, the palace starts to slowly pull himself up to his feet. The, uh, the bride follows suit. Um, you see him kind of reach up and kind of, you know, lovingly pat the side of her face. You can see tears in her eyes, but she's smiling. Um, can I prepare an action? Uh, yeah, what do you want to prepare? Is well, is it an insight really? Does this look like something bad's about to happen? No. I've uh, got a feeling that something bad's about to happen. Well, again, she uh, she looks pretty happy. Everybody else here seems to be smiling. Okay, right, I'm, I'm going to prepare an action that if a dagger gets drawn for some sort of sacrifice bullshit, I'm going to try and sprint out across and stop it from happening. Yeah. What if she's the monster? Just preparing that. Okay, Sorry. so uh, he um, kind of has, you know, a face in his hand, and uh, you kind of hear from the bushes, just like Loretta. On the day of your wedding, it is my honour to have known you in your old life, and I wish you all the best in your new life. This is what you wish. She nods, and uh, you hear Yes, yes it is, with all my heart. He nods, um, turns to the, to the crowd. Friends, let us wish Loretta all the best in her union with the Lord. May she prosper, as we surely will. A uh, kind of murmured um, you know, yeah, congregational various amens and stuff like that. Um, he then steps back from the altar. The uh, bride steps forward and uh, with one hand reaches forward and starts to extinguish the candles with a, a Inch of finger and thumb. Um, and as she does this, something emerges from the woods. Now, this takes you all by surprise because 
what emerges from this woods is something that has no kind of defies belief a little. Um, it looks, oh, this is going to be hard to describe, um, almost like uh, an oversized deer. The uh, kind of a hind legs and, and forelegs uh, of a quadrupedal beast, but bound in muscle. Um, however, where the deer's head should be is the uh, what appears to be the torso of a man. However, the torso has no head and its arms outstretched to form antlers. You see another pair of limbs dangling loosely in front of its forelegs and a, a uh, well, no visible more. But this creature walks forwards from the, uh, from the woods. And as it gets to the swamp, you see it start to walk towards the, uh, the altar. Uh, you notice it's walking atop the surface. As it, uh, as it approaches, every, every gathered villager kind of falls to their knees, even in the ones in the swamp to the point where it is, uh, is up to their necks. Um, Rulin, you watch as the, uh, the bride kind of stands atop the altar, and again, you just see this kind of beam of happiness across her face. Um, she kind of reaches her hand out towards this thing, which lowers itself a little bit. It's uh, forelimb reaching out to return the grasp. And as uh, she takes her hand, it is hand in hers, she pulls a dagger. <clears throat> and, uh, I mean... And with no one to stop her, she uh, plunges it deep into her own chest. Oh. Oh. This um, creature just stands there and watches. But as it does so, um, Rapella steps forward. Uh, prostrates himself in front of it. Oh Lord, we beseech you, continue your watchful gaze over our lands, keep our bounties prosperous and our borders safe. And watch over Loretta's spirits, may she be at your side. May she want for naught. Do we interfere? Braxton! I think it's too late. Still save her! She did that willingly as well. She didn't look forced into it. And she did look quite happy about the whole process. So, uh, as this is being discussed between you guys, the uh, creature nods its torso a little bit. The uh, body of this, uh, this Loretta lies on the altar, the blood spread, uh, blood stains spreading um, out. But this creature seems uninterested, or at least it isn't devouring the body. Um, and it makes no real signs that it is uh, interested in the corpse at all. Um, it stands there solemnly and uh, almost beholds the congregation. Um, the pillar again remains face pressed into these roots of the altar. Um, 
But after a while, this creature turns and starts to walk the way it came. And uh, almost as quickly as it arrived, it vanishes. It Again, it's just uncomfortable to behold something this large simply stepping into the tree line and seeming to disappear. Can we try to follow? Uh, well, if you leave the rushes now, you're going to be seen by everyone there. She may seem dead, but I could save her. It's not too late. I'm not sure that it's our place to do it. She willingly sacrificed herself. I mean, this is clearly their beliefs of the village. It's Is it our business to interfere? Norik just looks frantically amongst everyone in the uh, party. He's super conflicted. We all feel the same way, Torrent. None of us particularly enjoys watching this, but this is how their village has survived for hundreds of years. Who are we to say that what they're doing is wrong? That woman, that poor, poor woman was probably told from birth that it was her destiny to do that. She was lied to. Maybe, but we don't know that for sure. And she seemed happy at the end. To rest her back from it now, who knows, maybe she wouldn't be so grateful. So, as this is going on, the creature's disappearance has uh, caused the congregation to slowly gather to uh, to their feet. Um, the Pala and the rest of them make their way uh, to the edge of a swamp. Um, they leave a body on the altar. And uh, before they go, one last group prayer is said before they uh, they depart. Um, but then this procession of, of candles makes its way back down the path towards the village. Hmm. Leaving you guys alone in the swamp. Great. Just great. Oh, I'm going to have to jump off now, by the way. Okay. Ah, okay, see you, Rich. See ya. We'll head on, I'll, well, Rulin will head on over to where the creature disappeared at the edge of the woods and just take a look around for uh, tracks or anything. Okay, so you, uh, you work your way over. Um, and it was a big creature, so it should definitely have left tracks. Um, however, despite that, there are none. Is there a, a track leading up to the edge of the woods and then the tracks disappear? So, uh, like, from, it, no, because, it, are, because it was walking along the surface of the water, wasn't it? There are no uh, tracks anywhere on this side of the forest. Nothing to suggest anything could pass, no broken or pushed aside trees. Nothing of a sort. A spirit, then, perhaps? We didn't physically see it interact with anything, did we? It just sort of nodded, touched hands with Loretta, but it didn't do anything significant, really, did it? Walk over to the altar. Okay, so uh, the body. Yes, the uh, the body is lifeless. The uh, 
the dagger went deep. And uh, from the looks of it, it was at least instant. She uh, managed to get herself right in the heart. Oh, is the body still there? Yes, yeah, the body's been left on the altar. Oh, shit. Um, Tris, uh, do you think you could deduce what's happened to her soul quickly? Oh, uh, speak to dead amulet. Let's go and have a chat with her. Um, so, Tris, you, uh, you grab the amulet, um, but yet you cannot seem to summon a spirit from his body. Oh. I think it's time for an experiment. And I, uh, I'm i going to uh, try a revivify. Um, okay, so Tark, you prepare your standard um, array of cocktails. Um, and as so you I, inject them... I think we should... I don't think we should interfere with this. As you... Uh, um, kind of inject this, Tark, you see the body react um in a way that suggests you know the adrenaline is working you get a few spasms of muscles but uh despite that the uh corpse remains lifeless it seems the soul is unable to return i suspected as much oh Torek punches wrong in there by three Wrong perception. Oh, I'm gonna genius it for whatever it's worth. <laughs> Fucking that only brings it up to four though. Um Tarek, you look around for a suitable tree to punch. Being none on the island, you have to look fairly far. Um and as you do, you notice the creature is back and it is staring at you. Oh. You uh Feel an uncomfortable presence in the back of your mind, and just for one word, um, I do not have that uh, particular spell prepared. What are you doing with that poor woman's soul? Does Tarek say that out loud? Yeah. Okay. Um, Can the rest of us see the spirit? Yes, you uh, You can't look to where Tarek is facing and this thing is stood there facing you all down. Um, should we say something? Yes, we will leave. Ooh. Can't believe we would. Okay, okay so... Uh, start stepping away. You guys start backing off um, as this thing starts to slowly trot forward across the swamp. Um, it's not doing it in a particular hurry. Um, and as you guys kind of get to the edge of the swamp and start putting distance between you two, um, you see this thing's forelimbs reach down and lift up the body uh, and almost embrace it um, and kind of carry it back towards the woods where this thing came from. Um, and once more, you watch as this thing walks into the woods, and you try and follow it this time, but after a second or two, this thing is lost amongst the trees. Hmm. Well. And that is where we're going to end it tonight. 
Nice. Oh no. Um also, yeah, Jason, you fucking nailed it. That is exactly the inspiration. Yeah, the second, second the second you started um describing it, I was like, shit, I know it, I know it. And like I had to sit here and think for like fucking ages yeah. and I was like, oh, I there we go. That. Um it's from a film called The Ritual. Well worth a watch, by the way. It is pretty terrifying. 